It's time for Twig. This week in Google, Jeff, Stacy, and Ant are all ready to go. We're talking about lots of stuff, including Facebook's new privacy tool and why it's not all that private. Why Google's ads look like search results. Why the Ring doorbell is spying on you. And why the U.S. Interior Department doesn't want to use Chinese-made drones anymore. It's all coming up next on Twig. This Week in Google is brought to you from Twit's LastPass Studios. Securing every access point in your company doesn't have to be a challenge. LastPass unifies access and authentication to make securing your employees simple and secure. Check out lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This, this is Twit. Twit. This is Twig, This Week in Google, episode 544, recorded Wednesday, January 29th, 2020. Impermeable. Hey, everybody, it's time for Twig, This Week in Google, the show where we cover the Googleverse, the Facebookverse, the Twitterverse, and the advertising verse. <laughs> That's Ant that Pruitt. He's adverse first. Adverse first. Yeah, just in time for Superb Owl, right? Superb Owl time coming up. What does your uh, T-shirt say? Create and dominate. Of course. That's your uh, that's your uh, tagline. That's isn't right, it? baby. Did you get that from somebody, or is that you all that's, yours? That's that's all me. So somebody made this shirt for you. That is all me. That's nice. my design. If I can move from create the and dominate, and it's got like a little camera, a shutter, and mm -hmm. a camera inside. That's nice. Thank you. Create and dominate. That's right. How you doing, sir? Not, I didn't make you sick. <laughs> you did not make me sick. Mm -mm. Nothing can make me sick. I'm impermeable. Stacy Higginbotham <laughs> um. is here from Stacy on IoT. I do not think it means what you Impermeable. think it means. Impermeable. <laughs> Germs cannot penetrate my membrane. Are you perhaps impervious? impervious uh, I am impervious. Maybe. Okay, that's even better. That's a better word. An impermeable. I like that. I mean, that. if you're talking about membranes, then sure, but I don't know. Yeah. Osmosis. Yeah. That's not how we get sick. And uh, anyway. my erstwhile colleague, Jeff Jarvis, is also here. Uh, erstwhile? Oh, I just had to use that. Jeff Jarvis, Buzz Machine, professor of journalism. Apparently, Diane Feinstein was talking to wrong. Julia Yaffe. Uh, introducing Julia Yaffe to another member of Congress, she said, "My, uh, she's an erstwhile journalist." And Julia said, "I do not think that word means what you think it means." <laughs> I am still a journalist. Did I ever tell you that I left San Francisco because of Diane Feinstein? No, do tell. I was columnist on the Examiner when it was still a newspaper, and uh, I, I, I was, you know, I covered the the Milk Moscone assassinations oh, and was horrible. there when horrible. Feinstein became mayor and yeah. I was very positive on Feinstein as a role but I mean once in a while I would criticize something well with Diane Feinstein if you criticize her once you are the enemy well, and I'm in trouble now. Uh, <laughs> she and her husband Dick Bloom made my life completely miserable with the publisher Reg, Reg Murphy and I finally just said I, I, I can't do this anymore and I found a job in New York and, and, and I had my farewell party on a Friday and that Monday Reg Murphy announced his, his retirement Oy. or resignation and a wag on the city desk said, well, thanks, Jarvis. He got rid of him, and now he thought he could leave. <laughs> he got rid of you and thought he could leave. So, yeah, yeah. so uh, yesterday there was a report in the LA Times that Dianne Feinstein was going to vote, was thinking about. That's where um, this all came up. Right. Uh, acquittal. And then suddenly she sent out tweets. No, 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 no. The LA Times misinterpreted me. I don't know how they misinterpreted her. but Rachel Maddow, who claims that she was the journalist Feinstein was talking to, she said, yeah, the LA Times got it wrong. That's not what Feinstein said to me. Ah. Okay. So confirming Feinstein's story that okay, good. She was, it was misreported. Sometimes people do make mistakes. Errors yes, happen. Yes, Errors do. happen. But none of that has to do with Google or the Googleverse. Hey, we got a date for uh, Google I.O. You're going to come on out, Jeff, for that? Um, as of now, I'm supposed to go to Germany on that day. Oh. What's going on we'll in see. Germany? Yeah, what's going on a, in Germany? A, a media conference in Leipzig. Oh, I was thinking of going to Germany in three weeks, Jeff, but for oh, a totally what, what different for? conference. For conference? an IIoT conference in Berlin. Ooh, ooh love What's Berlin. I -I love Berlin. The Industrial Internet oh, of Things. Oh, who yeah. knew? Now that would be fast. Double I IoT. I have you done <laughs> Berlin yet? I have. I've, I've been to, I went to this conference a couple of years ago, and then I feel like I was in Berlin another time. But this one's in February, and Berlin in February is, is pretty cold. Chilly. Well, it's always gray, but that's why you well, have coffee. 
there. <laughs> I did. I did have lovely coffee and something else. It all kind of blurs, though. May I have a Berlin, like Berlin. parenthesis? Berlin parenthesis. <laughs> <laughs> May twelfth. <laughs> May twelfth through fourteenth. Shoreline Amphitheater. Google I O. Uh, we already talked to Jason how he'll be going. We'll we'll do the usual. I stay here while Jason goes forth. And maybe you should go. Actually, why don't you? Would you like to? Sure. Yeah. Uh, Shoreline. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> well, I stay here and anchor while we do the keynote. But sure. we like to send people out because there's lots to see at Google I O. It's always a fun event. I've, I've not been to uh, an I O event for maybe four years, four or five years. But even then I went to the extended because the whole media press uh, lottery just, just goes so quickly, at least back then it did. So the so, way that yeah. Google does this traditionally, they do a puzzle, right? And the puzzle was solved this week. That's how we know the dates. This right. is the puzzle. <laughs> it's almost as I don't know fascinating what, am I, am I as supposed to Microsoft's. Click it? <laughs> what am I supposed to do? Let me click it. Does something happen? You're supposed to solve this. I'm hypnotized. That looks exactly like May 12th through 14th. I when just, I, look at I just <laughs> love the ingenuity of engineers. They, Google loves to put these little, and then people go, oh, it means something, but what? And they solve it. It's events.google.com slash io slash mission if you want to solve it. Apparently, it looks like Space War. Oh, maybe it is. Maybe we need no. Mr. Oh. Neil deGrasse Tyson to yeah. help solve this. Yeah. <laughs> no, nope. I'm trying all the keystrokes. Anyway. So, thank goodness somebody solved it. We now know Google I.O. is yeah. May 12th through 14th. Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> we figured it out. Thank you very much. Um, big story of the week probably this week is Facebook yesterday publishing a way to control off Facebook activity. Um, the off Facebook activity tool, which I would go to, but when I go there, of course, it says you got to log in, and I don't have a Facebook account, <laughs> right? So uh, right, I can't right. really show that. Um, I a number of people have complained about this. In fact, there was a Gizmo article that says it doesn't do profanity. Squat. Uh, what it does do is it decouples your Facebook account to third party. I get. I don't know collection tools. Um, it was Clear History, which was announced or introduced two years ago. The tool shows you, I'm told, a list of apps, websites, and businesses Facebook knows you visited through things like the Facebook login, the Facebook like and share buttons, the tracking pixels, and other less visible features for uh, developers. And it gives you the option to disconnect the identifiable information. It neither deletes the information on Facebook's side nor on the third party side. It just, I guess, stops the the flow. Good thing. I'm trying to go to it now. It's a good thing that it's now sure. going back to the third party. Um, instead of them just saying, hey, we're wiping our hands of it from on our side of things when you delete your account. But it, you still have that stuff out there from those old apps that you use to, to, to sign in with uh, your old Facebook account that could still monetize off of that data some kind of way so yeah EFF for cleaning that up EFF says well first of all nobody's going to do it in fact they in, in the US for example three quarters of adults don't even know that Facebook has an ad preferences page all right uh, people who listen to the show know maybe because we talk about it they also say and this tool doesn't even come close to covering all the ways Facebook collects and monetizes data about you for instance it doesn't give you a way to opt out of custom audiences that's uh, their targeted advertising service that uh, is fantastic for advertisers. Um, as long as the burden, EFF writes, is on users to carefully manage multiple sets of labyrinthine privacy settings. That's a good word to describe. Nice. <laughs> Facebook's privacy settings. The privacy invasive norms of targeted advertising will remain. But Facebook and other companies whose business model relies on harvesting your data know that most users are uncomfortable with the status quo and likely would not choose to have ads targeted at them if given a real option. EFS says that's why we need strong federal privacy safety laws in the U.S. My concern is for someone like you or me uh, that don't have Facebook accounts but may have previously used Yeah, I can't apps. get to it. We can't do anything about it. So that data is still dangling out there. Now, granted, I've never logged in with Facebook on any of those services or whatever, but... So I haven't either, but I went to look at mine because I have an account, but I don't log into it ever and I don't use it. And holy moly. There's a lot I've of stuff. Four, 
I've got 462 apps and websites checking on my stuff most recently as last Wednesday. That is the and, thing that's most eye-opening is how much of this is going on. And it's, I mean, tons of journalism sites, right? Tons of, huh. Oh, I know why. I was like, why is so? Why is Yves Saint Laurent? But it's the Google backpack. Uh, <laughs> I was like, why is this happening? I don't buy things from YSL. <laughs> oh, I do. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, so so some of mine are, but in some of them, I'm like, did I really go to Zyrtec.com? Jeff, do you want to hit mm -hmm. the moral panic button yet? No, um, I, I think that as with the entirety of cookies and everything, we were we were not transparent enough about it in these industries, in technology industry and advertising industry and media industry, all of us. I put us all in that same bucket. Mm -hmm. And so more transparency about what we're doing, why we're doing it, what benefit you get out of it, and so on. You know, it's, it's like Google getting rid of third-party cookies, which we talked about last week. Uh, everybody's, you know, yeah, hallelujah. But then big you know, media companies are going to be hurt badly and journalism is going to be hurt as a result because more revenue is going to go away and Google's going to benefit. And it's not as simple as it seems. It's not, it's not a clear-cut good or evil. Mm -hmm. um, there are reasons some of these things exist and there are benefits to people we like that will go away. Well, and you've and pointed so out before that, that this is nothing, this isn't even new to the internet. I mean, the internet has kind of weaponized it. But uh, I remember interviewing people uh, 30 years ago from Claritas talking about how you give me your zip i could tell you what magazines oh, you subscribe yeah. to and yeah, yeah. what probably what cars in your driveway because uh and so they they've been collecting this for decades mm -hmm. they just there's just a lot more data than ever before is that something to be concerned about so let me give you something that'll freak you out just because it'll be fun to freak you out uh maybe you knew this i didn't know this i i was at a um salon oh uh this La week I meant because there was no dinner. There was just cheese on the table. Um, oh, is that what that means? That's what it means, oh, yeah. Cheese on the table. I thought you were getting salon. your hair done. <laughs> no, no, no. That's what I was thinking. Yeah, my barber Thank you, shop, Ann. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Intellectual. Oh, literary shop. salon, yeah. not a beauty um, salon. Okay. So I was at the salon, and uh, Chatham House, so I, I shouldn't say who was there or where, but a, a big ad guy said, I, I did not know this. And, then, and one of my students this week in our new leadership program confirmed this when I talked about it in class. That Amazon is taking to guessing what you want and sending it to you even though you don't ask. What? No. No, they are yes. not. No. Yes. Not on my One of my dime. students said, <laughs> well, like, my students said yeah, there's, and, and if, you, if you don't want it, you send it back and that's that. No, you got to go to trouble sending it back, but it's free. You know, you, you haven't missed anything. I think, I think under postal law, is if this, it's unsolicited. Yeah, you, you can order take anything you want. But uh, yeah. is this for review purposes? Like they say, would you review it or are they just No, they're just to trying you? to anticipate your needs. So one of my students said, we have this new one, one magnificent, uh, just a great, great week, uh, program in news innovation, leadership and management degree. And one of the students said, yeah, she was, she was thinking, oh, about time to get my new uh, laundry pods. I haven't gotten those in a while. And boom, they were there. And hmm. she, in fact, did need them and did keep them and went ahead and paid for them. Yeah. Is, um, it, is it for things like their though, subscription right? service? Like, are they saying like, hey, you usually, like, there's a couple things that I usually buy, but I don't have the subscription for. So I can see Amazon being like, wait a second. I bet she's going to want these now. This is yeah, uh, an, ar an article from last year, actually two years ago, from Business Insider. More people are getting sent mysterious Amazon oh, packages wow. that two years, two years ago they didn't order, and no one knows exactly what's going on. They talked to a, a, a actually Daily Beast talked to a person named Nikki that unwrapped a package only to find a twenty-five dollar sex toy inside. She's continued to receive. That would be insulting. She's continued to receive I'm not packages sure that's Amazon. for things she didn't yeah, order, including no. junk like a charging cable for a Bluetooth device. Amazon. That doesn't sound like it. That I've sounds seen like says they're there. investigating. This must be something else. I've seen this is something like different. PR. Uh, PR have sent things to me in the past, and that comes oh, yeah. in a prime box that I know I didn't order. And when you open it up, it would have just, you know, some random product that they're hoping that you would review. Or yeah, that's why you. I asked about reviews, because mm -hmm. I think that that does happen, that Amazon sellers and products will sometimes arrive uh, unsolicited because they want a review. Right. right. I've seen that okay. happen. But just the idea of Amazon saying, hey, yeah, I know you ordered these, uh, which is actually due now. My dog probiotics wants some out. I'm going to go ahead and send that out to you. And But I don't do want them that. to do that because I don't want them to just automatically bill me that without knowing. Against the law, yeah, there's this... got to be a law. No. Well, not if they. Um, maybe if they don't charge you, like maybe if you're supposed to say, 
click I accept this, but yeah, if you don't, then that's don't fine. Click, that's fine. Know. But it's, but again, give me some type of warning. Shoot me an email to say, hey, we're trying out this service. You know, we think this may help you out. And well, what if they so send it to you though with a note that said, "Surprise!" As one of our favorite customers, we're sending this ahead of you, like in trying to get data from. I'm this fine is, with that because is, that's communication. This is so commonplace. There's, there's a term that. for it. It's <laughs> called brushing. 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 Yeah. It's a scam. Uh, the brushings, this is from uh, last October. Okay. Uh, oh, this is, but this is not what we're talking about. Well, we are, we might be though, because do they know that they're being... They're not random. Jeff they're is talking about Amazon using its data to proactively yes. send you right. things it thinks she wants. Brushing yes. apparently is some random third party sending you packages for fraud yeah, purposes to boost that's very something different. to game Amazon's system. But how do we so, know that that's not what's happening with these students? Uh, because it, because it was Amazon itself, and there was a little note inside saying, "We think you need this. Do you want this? If not, you can send oh. it back." Yeah. Oh, that's the so communication. Was supposed, well, see, yeah. that's it was, fine. It was, it was what it, if you communicate it, 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 I'm fine with that. But yeah, it wasn't don't what it just willy nilly. Do but old, I don't want to have to send here's stuff the only back. Thing. That's a pain. You gotta in send it back. Yeah, true. That's, that's the thing. <laughs> well, that's where we got the U.S. postal postal law. I believe says if something is sent to you unsolicited, it is yours. You can keep it. I've always thought that was the rule. That's why there was there was a company I worked with some time ago that did plaques. Uh, you know, uh, 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 Twit Twit is named one of the top 25 businesses oh, in this Petaluma. This is like the old who's who oh, scam. Oh, who's who. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what they did was they would make a plaque of this yeah. and send it to you. And then uh, and you really should get the book that this where this is announced for $50. Uh, right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But you but you get the plaque and then, and then you're not, you know, you could no keep obligation. it. But most people who didn't want it actually did send it back. It was prepaid. You didn't lose it. You just had to go the hassle of going to drop it off somewhere. Or the hassle putting it out front. So, so at this salon, um, and this major uh, ad executive, and he's a big deal ad executive, said uh, he's been arguing that advertising will die. It's the process of dying. And he said, what's going to happen here is we're going to, instead of, instead of forcing upon you things you don't want, we're going to know what you want and give you what you want. And, and said that way, that's not a bad thing. But he also said, this will freak you out. I'm trying to freak you out here. Um, that he said, we'll know 18 months before you know that you're going to buy a house. Right. Okay. Right? Yeah. yeah. This that, is, what, this is uh, Shoshana Zuboff's contention in surveillance capitalism. Who went? Who just went berserk, full moral panic in the New York Times this week. Jesus, oh, the language of it. I'll have to read that. Was the sky is falling. Her, her fear is not. <laughs> she says that's the end stage is where they start uh, predicting your behavior and influencing your behavior. Uh, because they know it so much. It gives me what I want. I'm okay with it. If somebody gets me out I of trouble, I'm okay with it. I guess if I got batteries in the mail and saying, you know, we think uh -huh. you've used enough AAA batteries, you probably need some more. Here's some more. I'm fine with that. If it's something that they know I use all the time, but again, just and you have communicate what if they send it to you, me. Well, wait, wait. What if they send you Amazon Basic batteries as opposed to Duracell batteries? Then I got a problem. I like Amazon Basic batteries. I'm just saying that Duracell might. There's I mean, a great like, article. What if they, uh, I can't remember where. Maybe it was the Times about where uh, Amazon Basic batteries come from. Where do they come? Uh, oh, I did monkey? read that. Yeah, it was an interesting story. Well, the question is: Are are these good batteries? What is? It's pretty much made by the same people in China mm -hmm. that make all the other batteries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so, I yeah, I mean, if but you could just send it back. I don't know. I don't like the idea of stuff being sent to me. It even feels like, and by the way, yes, that's what uh, Zuboff is talking about in this opinion piece in the Times. You are now remotely controlled. Oh, Jesus. Surveillance yes. capitalists control the science and the scientists, the secrets and the truth. I don't know if she's. I will say that if I off. see enough ads for something, yeah. it's highly likely that I will investigate it and buy it. I'll be like, oh. You'll at least oh, look at it. Thank God it. advertising works. Yeah. yeah. I'll Not at least it, look. I give you that. I'm not going to get like those Instagram it. style ads for oh, like they random. Work too well. Yeah, they're really good. I'm just like, <laughs> and you know, those work well because why? Because they they send you ads that they know are going to target it. Well. They're targeted. targeted. Well, it's it's about relevant. So I so I saw I, I got into a Twitter tiff yesterday. Just I just it's just I just responded to a tweet disagreeing with it. Um, woman well, said, "You know, what, wouldn't it be great if all the platforms agreed they wouldn't algorithmically recommend anything?" And I said, "Then you're back to mass media." It means you have no relevance. You're going to get bombarded with messages that don't mean anything to you. you and they're going to be more that. desperate screaming at you. You're going to get more clickbait. Yeah. And it's going to be worse. It's what we escaped from mass media. I hate mass media. We're not a mass. And that's what we've escaped. Now, is it done stupidly? Yeah. 
the boots you look at follow you around for two months after you friggin' bought them. That's stupid advertising. It's not surveillance advertising. It's dumb advertising. And they've got to improve that. Uh, are people using it badly? Sure they are. But in the long run, knowing me as an individual rather than presuming I'm a mass can yield better things for me. It just depends on whether you're smart or stupid about how you then manage it. Yeah. But to outlaw it is is that's moral panic. To say all algorithms are bad and should be outlawed is 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 you gotta agree with me here. That's an example of moral panic. Hmm. You talking about ad the, the anyone the, saying that though. I I could show you the tweet. <laughs> you you talk about um ads all dying algorithmic down. recommendation should be banned. What's that? All algorithmic recommendations should be banned. Sorry, Ed, but just answer answer uh, the challenge. Um, that's what was said. <laughs> Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just thinking about with the the big game that's coming up this on uh, Sunday. Uh, they're trying to put more ads in to the game. Did you Are hear they that? Really? Yeah. Well, they make a lot of this, like two million dollars for Super Bowl. Well, now what, what, that what number game is, is that? a lot larger. What, is there a game now. Sunday? Some there's some Super big foo Bowl. football game oh. with uh, the a little the team local from, team playing in it, just oh. by uh, just oh. happenstance. Yeah, I heard they. I heard they played somewhere <laughs> down the road from here. <laughs> uh, I'll just put American. it. I'll be wearing gold and silver, or red all. Yeah, I saw all your day. outfit. You want to put that picture up? I saw your outfit. <laughs> Jeez, was that cheesy? What are you talking about? Jeez. So it's the 49ers Jeez. versus the Kansas City, Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs. Oh. Oh, bless you, Stacy. Bless you. Bless right. your Most heart. of our audience doesn't know <laughs> Hand Egg very well. They don't they don't care for it. <laughs> I am looking forward to the commercials, by the way. I can't wait. They're, I'm excited well, we have, about the Bill Murray's gonna be back with Groundhog Day. Oh. Oh, really? We have Google's commercial is up on the rundown. Do you want to it's look a, at it? I hate to show them because I feel like it's a spoiler. It's a three no, hanky. It's a three hanky. Show it. it really is. No, we can't show it. YouTube Google would no. not take us down on YouTube for showing a Google ad. <laughs> they sure would. Really? <laughs> I do uh, like uh, those Google ads, but I'm starting to feel like they're a little manipulative. Oh, yeah. They also have a Black History Month one, which is very good. Mm -hmm. I put both of them up on the rundown. Have you noticed? I saw this uh, article in The Verge by John Porter last week. Google's ads are indistinguishable from the no, search look results. look at that word. Look at that word. What, it's exactly what okay, I've been saying. Stop, 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 Jeff. 20 years. You have your fit. I've been begging Hold them to just use the word ad, and there it is. Go ahead. Ad. It, I couldn't be clear. I, it's the language. When, when I am searching, I am searching. I'm on a mission. I'm a woman on a mission. I click my, I put my search term in, and I want to click the top result. And that is default what people do. Yeah, but that that's, word that, that's is really sm small. Small. Yeah. And... I know it says ad right there when you're looking, but when you're just like, I need the recipe for, you know, corn dogs. Actually, does just it like, say ad? It uh, does. Yeah, it, it does say ad. It does. Why am I not getting Which, any ads? Because you got the, the, then they put you back to the other one. Oh, uh, maybe I'm, search I'm, for I'm brave. shoes or something. Yeah, shoes. Search for mesothelioma. Yeah, oh, there it is. It says ad. No ad. And Google wants also wants to know where I am so they could show so me the right shoes. Stacey, oh, look at that. I, they, I, had, they got rid of the ad. When it found out where I was, they said, oh, no, let's go to these stores instead. Yeah. But these aren't labeled as Those aren't ads. ads. Those aren't ads. That's just map that's, data. That's maps, yeah. Uh, you can actually buy spots on the map now. So those are ads? Oh, nice. Well, the well not all of these are ads, but they have on the maps now, they do have ads. True, uh, but does that show up in search? That you can buy. I don't know if it shows up in search. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know it shows up. I do a lot of like like restaurants near me when I'm traveling, and I notice that I do now get ads for things. They are in marked. Maps. I yes. can't get in ads maps. to in save maps. my life. <laughs> I want ads. Okay, you're not searching for things like Give me best for, search for uh, belt phone for... charger. Phone no. charger. Yeah. That's a good one. No ads, unless this Amazon um, result is no, an ad. it's not. No, it's a it's the most not. popular uh, I'm search for organic results. Oh wait a minute, Maybe uh, if I turn Android off the ad phone. blocker. You think the ad blocker's doing it? Yes, it does. Are you using no. Brave or Chrome? Brave. Then don't use no. Brave. I'm in Chrome because trying Brave's it. Brave's going to block that. Is That's Brave? why I love Brave, yeah, baby. Yeah, Brave blocked it, but I'm trying Chrome, and I'm not getting it on so, Chrome right now either. So the point of this article was that the typo typography now on um, on Google search results is designed so that the the headlines, they used to be different, right? They used to be blue or purple or something. Yeah, right? they were 
very you vibrant. You have a color coded thing. What? Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you guys. It's it. raining. That just shows how relaxed you are with us, and I appreciate that. This is that. coffee. I may need a second cup. Wait a minute, this it's raining in Seattle? Hour. How long has it been no. since it rained last? <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, this, this morning. The it snow sunny, melted? like two days ago. Did the snow all melt? Yes, the snow did melt. It was, it was only there for like three days. Hey, congratulations. Google has announced... It's 10th messaging service. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Wow. It's going double to. Digits. It's double digits, baby. It's going to unify <laughs> Gmail, G Drive, Hangouts, Chats. This will be for the G Suite folk. Wait, so, but weren't non G Suite people supposed to lose Hangouts, but people still have Hangouts? Still they have, have hangouts. Meet, they have Hangouts, Meet, and Hangouts, Chat. That's what they did. They split it out. So the new mobile app, this is, comes from uh, Kevin McLaughlin writing in the information. The new mobile app, which is currently being tested internally at Google, includes Gmail, Drive, Hangouts Meet, uh, Hangouts Chat. It's, it sounds to me like a Slack clone, but Google already has its own. It's their second Slack clone. It's their second <laughs> Slack clone. <laughs> Tenth messaging service. Their second Tenth Slack Tenth messaging clone. service. Their second Slack clone. Good Lord. That's so diplomatic. For years, Google has had one of the more confusing collections. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's a little confusing. We don't have G Suite at, at the Pruitt home, but we use Hangouts and been waiting on it to die, and it hasn't gone away. Well, I use yeah. it because I'm on Google Fi, and I, don't, I think it's not going to die on Fi. I hope not because it's, it's my oh, message. It's the messaging it's my SMS app. SMS messaging, right. yeah. I could use Android messages but i don't because i want it to work on iphone it's the only one that right. works cross-platform right Oof. the unified communications app for business what does it mean to put different apps within one app do i do i Confusion. get into the app and then say i want to do this versus yeah. that so if you're in well, slack right now i thought the term um, was synergy <laughs> well, the idea is it becomes the hub of all your business activity, right? Yeah. So when you're in Slack, if you if you put a Google Drive link in there, the document's there, and you can open the document. If you want to chat with somebody vo by voice or video, mm -hmm. you click them, and it can do that. So the idea is to merge it all into one Isn't tool that's that always Gmail? running. Like my Gmail, when I'm in Gmail, I get all of my chats yep, down yep, one side. Yep, yep. I have all my Drive. I can move. I mean... Isn't that already? Some of that's correct? extensions that you might have added. I know I, I can't remember okay. which are which are native and which are extensions, but it's a very common extension to on add. The computer, it's like I'm just I have I'm just like I feel Not like my email Gmail is my center or my unified communication yeah. platform. Yeah, but now they'll have an app. Wouldn't that be better? Mm. <laughs> 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 oh, no, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be bad. It wouldn't, no, it wouldn't be better. It's too much. Mm -hmm. Oh, I was going to say, um, okay, I'm going to backtrack just a minute to the privacy conversation. Dude, because I'm moving Probably. along at a rapid clip, so please. No, don't. I don't. <laughs> Try to get rid this of This is going to come you? up with our ring discussion. It's going to come up again, so yeah. we might as well just, just keep hit it. Just privacy is the thread here. Private, um, this idea about Facebook with ring, with all of these things, telling us more. I'm a huge fan of transparency, but... At CES, I did a conversation with uh, Colin Engel, who is the CEO of iRobot, and he pointed out to me, he was like, that sounds good, but whenever we talk about our privacy features on our, our marketing or on the box, cons our sales go down. He's like, consumers oh, don't, don't want to think the, about that at all. Yeah. Just pretend it's private. So it's not so, so, well, in their case, I think he's actually trying, He's we had a big discussion about well, what they're he's trying selling, to do there. But. He's selling kitty taxis, in-home kitty taxis. And right. nobody wants, if you're buying an in-home kitty taxi, you don't assume that there's any privacy implications. So raising that specter by putting it on the box, people go, well, what do you mean? My iRobot is watching me? And in fact, it does map your house, right? So that the kitty it doesn't does get pushed off underneath a sofa or something. But when it maps your house and it like shares that data with, I shouldn't say it shares that data, when you connect it with like Google or an Amazon device to say, hey, go clean the kitchen, he would, he actually explained to me, he was like, we don't actually share the maps with them. We just take that instruction set and then tell the device where to go. So they're not giving oh, okay. a two way. So that's what they, they have to do what Apple does, which is, you know, Apple says, 
<laughs> when we do face recognition, we only store a digital representation of your face. Which, by the way, is the only thing a computer can yeah, store. Yeah, okay. right. <laughs> right uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, really? You don't, you don't actually Stacey. take my face and put it right. in the phone? Okay. Appreciate it. Yeah, thank you, Apple. <laughs> so that's what Apple does. Apple says, we only store a digital representation of your face. They also say, and this is another very powerful phrase, on device. Now, I don't know if it's a powerful phrase to normal people, but to people like us, mm -hmm. on device face recognition as opposed to in the cloud, cloud face recognition. That's important for us. And that's, by the way, what iRobot's saying, but it sounds like he doesn't want to even say, hey, because you know why? He doesn't. He doesn't want to put a disclaimer on the box saying, all the home mapping data we collect is stored on device. That scares the hell out of people. <laughs> <laughs> don't don't think even that mention way. that we're doing that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think about Just it don't. that way. Okay, that's fair. But I mean, and that's that but that's is a because lot of it's people a don't think that's because it's a vacuum cleaner. Possibly, but I think also people don't want. It's a hard thing to think about right. privacy. You're like, ah, oh, no, I want this cool feature, and then you're like, mm, do I want to get? Oh, never so mind. Are we going I don't to the ring story this. yet? Let's do this one. This is from <laughs> privacyinternational.org, an open letter to Google to Sundar Pichai. Dear Mr. Pichai, we the undersigned agree with you. Privacy. See, this is what they. This is the sneaky. Mm -mm. We're going to agree with you in the first sentence while we rip you a new one on the rest of the letter. That's what my mom used to do. <laughs> Privacy cannot be a luxury. Good editor right there. Right. Cannot be offered to only to those people who afford it. And yet, here comes the ripping. Mm -hmm. Android, this, by the way, is kind of shameful. Android partners, these are people who use Android to make devices. Even phones that are branded Google Play Protect are installing apps that cannot be deleted, which can leave users vulnerable to their data being collected, shared, and exposed without their knowledge or consent. These pre-installed apps can have privileged custom permissions that let them operate outside the Android security model. I always wonder when I see Facebook on my Samsung phone, I can't delete it. I can only disable it. Right. You know, what is, what, I don't, is Facebook getting any information from that presence on my phone, even if I disable even it? Even if it's disabled, it makes you wonder if there's still a call for home yep. on there. Permissions can be defined by the app, including access to the microphone, camera, and location without triggering the standard Android security prompts. Users are therefore completely in the dark about these intrusions. This comes it's from the problem uh, of an open platform, isn't it, though? You know, hey, anybody can well, make a, an Android phone and yes. they, can set, they can set their own rules on it. But but, um, what, but they're, they're what they're asking Google, Google to do rules. is to not have Google say this is an you know, a, this it should be an AOSP Android device, not a Google device. Android device. Some type be, of standardization. Yeah, on this. yeah, yeah. It shouldn't, it shouldn't have Google Play Protect branding. It shouldn't have the Google Store on it. It should just be an open source device. But well, speaking of things that consumers probably won't notice. Right. ACLU, the Afghanistan Journalist Center, Americans for Democracy and Human Rights in Bahrain, because this really hits uh, um, the uh, third world heavily, a Amnesty International. And on and on and on. A long list of organizations. Duck, duck, go. And EFF uh, signers to this. Uh, it feels like Google probably should do something uh, on those phones. Or, or make a, make a, maybe just, maybe they should say, hey, look, if you're going to do Android, you can't be bundling this crap on here. That's that is what they should do. Yeah. Then I mean, they'll get accused. I, I agree with you. Sorry, Stacey. I didn't hear you. Go oh, ahead. Go ahead. But... You agree with me, but uh, I didn't hear you because I was talking over you because I didn't hear you start talking. Oh no, no, no! I was just saying that's that's what they should do. That was all I was going to say. Oh, okay. Um, it was a short yeah, and I agree with you. Uh, put it in the history books. But <laughs> I wonder, you know, in the in the unintended consequences world, uh, will will somebody then come after Google and say Google's trying to control this open platform, so it's not really open? I'm trying to lock and they're it down. They're putting all these rules right. and locking it down, and they're preventing well, uh, competitive they apps from going up there. Have they gotten trouble for things like uh, what was it treble? They're because yeah. they have other like the patrolling of I'll call it patrolling of the Android Play Store um, or the Play Store rather Google Play Store or things like Project Treble. Those are all efforts to control and keep the platform stable and up to date for everybody, mm -hmm. and it, it's arguably for the health of consumers. I think they're probably going to be okay. But that's more, yeah, I agree. But that's more the how the how the OS operates as opposed to what's allowed on it. And so, uh, okay, right. So Google gets in trouble for for trying to be God because it is God. 
to police and, the platform. And, and I agree they Google. should. And I agree it's smart. I agree with all of that. But just seeing ahead, I'm going to bet that some... Um, Why not? Somebody's going to come after him. Why not take the same approach that Google took with... Um, was it called material design many years ago when they tried to standardize things and, and make it to where this is something a little more unified for every every device out there? Why not take that same approach and say, hey, we don't want this type of um, backdoor service running or, or bloatware, if you will. And, you know, why I not? I think what Privacy International is asking is completely reasonable, which is Google should say, if you're going to do a Google branded official Google Play version of Android, you should not pre-install third-party software. Or allow... Or else put just stuff, your own... Allow name others to install. Right. Or, well, and, and by the way, the research paper has a long list of um, uh, companies that are doing this. And it's it's everybody, including Google, by the way. Uh, it's everybody. It would be nice if you would just... If Google could just say, hey, look, if, you know... Uh, it sh maybe just say, hey, it should be able to. You should be able to uninstall it. I would love on my Samsung phone to be able to uninstall uh, Facebook. Mm -hmm. So take me down memory it. lane, Gramps. Here, yeah. uh, well, I, I don't have to deal with this at all anymore. Of course, because okay. I have. Did you all of a sudden book. lose your teeth? The old days, you used to go into the bank to get money. <laughs> so, so I have teeth. a Chromebook, and I don't have to deal with any of this stuff. Uh, in the land of PCs, which yeah. I just don't know anymore, yeah. do you still have the problem there that we complained about loudly in years past? Yes. Of bloatware? Yes, yep. you still do. In fact, oh, you poor souls. there's an even worse thing starting to happen in there in Windows 10. <laughs> they're putting Ooh. ads They're putting ads on it. So WordPad now has really? an ad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then the ads are in the start menu and stuff like that. You can remove it all. There's a, there, are, there are a number of buttons you have to turn off to you prevent it. You poor schmucks. I know. know Windows know. is not... A lot of the themed laptops out there, even like this device I have here that's themed as a creator's workstation. From it, MSI. Right. It put in their own little... Oh, they all do it. ...creative software, if you Oh, will, they still help, do that. To but to Microsoft's it. credit, they created a program called Microsoft Signature PC mm -hmm. that has no crapware. Yeah, that... Nobody <laughs> signed up. <laughs> I mean, there's like a hand, there's like the smallest handful four of, of them. Sig <laughs> yeah. Signature PCs <laughs> among... Microsoft's are among them. Mm -hmm. But Do uh, you still hear... I don't hear that complaint. I mean, we... All, I think on this show, going way back, Gramps... We used to scream about that. I still um, do, yeah. Do you still hear people complaining about it? Or oh, yeah. It's just you accepted? obviously don't listen to Windows Weekly. I have review, <laughs> I, I have a review unit right now in the in the host office that's got some bloatware on it right now. Oh, it all comes. Is there like a bloatware it, score that you put on these things? No, like bloatware. <laughs> but they all come Level with the antivirus demo versions and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I actually have System a, Optimizer. I have a crap. script that I run on all new Windows PCs that gets rid of, you know, all the in installed, lists the installed programs, removes them. This is why all the nerds love you. Yeah, you this is a PowerShell script. Everything. Yeah, that gets rid of everything. <laughs> um, and because it's just, it's just not, uh, I run this before I will. And and there there used to even be, I think there still is, let me see, a uh, software program called PC Decrapifier. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's still around. I, I doubt they're out of business. I um, remember that. Oh, wait a minute. I said decap a fire. That's a different thing. If you decap it to your <laughs> PC. Yeah, the PC decrapifier.com. So this just... Poor this souls. I, I really have <laughs> forgotten about all this. I've totally forgotten about this hassle. Yeah. Yeah, those were the days. And the re do, you st do you still have a registry? Oh, God, yes. 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 Oh, man. Oh, you poor guys. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. But it's gotten better from a registry standpoint. I'm, if it's I'm, still there, it's not better, right? I'm not in it's there nowhere there. near as often as I had to be in there during those XP days. Well, that, that was the scariest there. thing in the world, wasn't it? Going oh, in and messing gosh. with the registry? Oh. Change this value to zero, and then your computer I turns remember blue. remember doing <laughs> yeah. auto eject <laughs> dot bad and config dot sys files. Yes. Uh, MS config. MS config. <laughs> <laughs> yep, yep. That was those were the days. Yep, but it has gotten better, Mr. Jarvis. Uh, like I said, those last couple of review units that I received, they had the the bloatware on there, uh, but it wasn't always obvious. Um, you just happened to to check your tray and see it hiding down there. You know? Well, the other thing is, we used to have to be penurious about about uh, storage space to get rid of stuff, but now yes. that's so memory so cheap, right? That, 
it doesn't it doesn't affect us negatively in that realm at least. Yeah, three hundred dollar laptops have terabyte drives on them now. By the way, yeah. I just yeah. I want to point out. <laughs> Unless you're buying Apple stuff. There is a certain ageism <laughs> yeah. in these ads. So Apple's holiday ad involved a poor grandpa who lost his wife and the little kids made a mm -hmm. little video and he cried at the end. Of course, I cried at the end. It's, it's kind of like good commercial. that opening of Up, the movie Up, which mm -hmm. is the most right. tear-jerking. Apparently, that's exactly the plan that is for Google's. Google's Super Bowl ad is to make you cry over Loretta. Grandpa can't remember things and wants to remember things about his wife and he tells Google to remember this for him and Google does. If I don't play the sound, Karsten, can I play the video? <laughs> I can I can do a, a dramatization. Yes, yes, oh, please. Jeff, dramatization. dramatization. That would be wonderful. Okay, so let me play it. <laughs> and then you do... How are you going to... Yeah, you play it and then you... I watched it. Okay. <laughs> Show me, me photos of, of Loretta. <laughs> Oh, yes. Oh, oh, she hated that mustache. Hey, she. Oh, 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 that was when Loretta was seeing that other did. guy. Yeah. Remember that, Google? Okay, <laughs> that little town. Where was that little town we went to we in Alaska, it Loretta? And me? Oh, yeah, I hated it was that Sitka. place. It was so freaking oh, cold. Oh, Loretta used to love to go to Sitka and hold dead fish. <laughs> Any she loved that. Okay, Google, remember that, please. So when do you oh, tell Google, Google to remember me, it? What show happens? Show anniversary pictures of me and Loretta, oh, will you please? She was. Uh, oh, that was. That's, uh, that is the script, actually. That's what he's. That's what he's saying. Yeah. I, I watched it earlier. Somehow Loretta turns into Ingrid Bergman from Casablanca. Well, oh, show know. me our favorite movie. Oh, Google. okay. And then oh, here's, oh, what you told, oh, oh. here's what you told. Oh, oh. Here's what you told. Oh, and then remember. it lists all the things you told yes. him to remember. Yes. Oh, cool. and so so you just have to say remember this about Loretta because right now I've asked. G to remember to tell me to take out the trash today. So, so in 20 years, can I be like, yeah. what day did I take out the trash? <laughs> <laughs> can I remember that? I love taking out the trash. Now my IOTs thing do it all for me. Oh they burn everything and, uh, and we have no trash. The world is better. I hope this episode doesn't cause anyone to drive off the road. So, if how? <laughs> so as others, diplomatic, yeah. and um, so was that the what was that the commercial one where they drove off the road? When I did the no, movie, that's the Mr. Peanut, yeah. Mr. Peanut ad. Which, by the way, because it's of really Kobe fun. Bryant's untimely death, yep. they had to pull all of the social media f prep for this ad. They spent. Huge amounts of money, not just for the ad, which involves Wesley Snipes and Mr. Peanut mm -hmm. saves him from death but dies himself in this right. horrible, fiery wreck, which, by the way, seems like a very bad idea in general, but for an ad campaign. Marketing's marketing. But they had this huge social media lead up to it, which they've now suspended because yeah. it was they deemed in poor taste after Kobe's untimely Kobe death. and all of the other eight others on that yeah yeah which who never gets device. Kobe and his daughter get remembered and they were remembered but there were six other people mm -hmm. the New York Times did a nice thing about oh, everybody good. else thank you New York Times um, anyway that Mr. Peanut thing looks dopey <laughs> but I, I will be watching the, the Super Bowl for the ads because I like the ads I think that's I was excited the about the uh, Sonata the the car park ad. Yes. <laughs> That'll be that, fun. Those are off. That's that made me very happy. <laughs> so I they're going to do. all of my friends in Boston. Did you, now, see, I don't want to watch these or show them. You didn't watch it? Oh, it's so. I mean, no, I know. because I'm, I'm waiting for the big game. I don't want to watch I, it now. I'm not going to watch the Super Bowl. I'm going hiking. He's, he's so. old fashioned. We're news. We get ahead smart of things. Car. It's okay. <laughs> so. Pack the car. Pack it's the a car. smart car. <laughs> smart car. So. They uh, they list on uh, iSpot.tv all the advertisers in their ads, and uh, there's going to be a Bill Murray a Groundhog Day reprise. There's going to be. There, is there Bloomberg and Trump in the list? Yes, Bloomberg and Trump are both on the list. Um, well, who's doing the park the car uh, ad? I can't remember. I'm uh, to Hyundai it. Sonata. Hyundai, that's right. Hyundai to re to make you think that Hyundai. they are not a Korean car company is going to do a whole thing celebrating the Boston accent featuring uh, Chris not Evans. not an accent most people want celebrated, but sure. Yeah, Chris <laughs> Evans will be it. Uh, John Krasinski from The Office. Ra and, and Rachel and Dratch. Rachel right. Dratch and David Ortiz, who actually probably doesn't either have a Boston accent, but he did play for the Red Sox. The, the, the yeah. Smat Pack. <laughs> They're going to be talking about the Smat Pack feature in the uh, Hyundai. David Ortiz, yeah. big poppy with an accent. Big Boston, poppy. Boston accent. 
That's yeah, those hilarious. actors are all from the area. I don't know. Are if they're they? All from, yeah, they're okay. all from places. In oh yeah, four Mass famous New Englanders. There you go. Oh, there you go. Yep. yep. <laughs> It's it's funny, mostly because yeah, because the people it is. But yes, Mountain Dew it, is going to uh, use Bill Murray, and they're going to do a Shining reprise as well. Mm -hmm. I cannot believe everyone in the chat room is discussing about ad spoilers. Yeah, guys, they're advertising. No, mm -hmm. I do not want to see any ads before their time. The, the, oh, the big game God. is all about the ads. They're old fashioned. No, the big game is all about the big game. No, it's not. <laughs> it's do about know, the halftime show. Do you know, here's a fun fact. There is 11 minutes of actual action in a three hour NFL game. 11 minutes. You know what the rest of right. it is? Ads. It's not 11. It's more like 15. <laughs> well, baseball has about 30 seconds. So. <laughs> well, there's a lot of action, but there's only 30 seconds of interesting action. Yeah. Who is who is the halftime show person? Uh, it's uh, J-Lo. I don't recall. It's J-Lo and I forgot the other person. Somebody else. I never equally. watch halftime. We don't want to give you a spoiler, Leo. It's not Billie Eilish. No, it's okay to know who's going to play, but you wouldn't want to watch the concert beforehand. All right. Oh, Shakira. 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 That's right. Shakira. 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 That's, <laughs> That's right. right. I love it when right. Stacy gets excited. She gets all pumped oh, up. Oh. <laughs> I watch that. Yeah, no, it's going to be good. Hips don't lie. That's right. <laughs> um, Ooh, professional darts. So uh, the ring doorbell. Yes. Yeah, we should talk about that. So the ex the the expose of that, which I take seriously, but. I saw, I see this, and this is, happens in, in Europe with GDPR. There's a leakage of this definition of privacy. So they share your IP address. Yeah. Okay. That's well, they say PII, more than that. They, they also, I know, but it's PII a lot of things in, they list. In the GDPR, PII, 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 PII. personally identifiable information, IP address is counted as that. I know, and I'm, so I'm saying that's absurd. And then EFF picks it up, and in its list of things they shouldn't share is your IP address, and they yeah. know better. Okay. So they're not complaining about your IP address in and of itself. They're complaining about the fact that you combine your IP address with your device, you didn't, or device identifying aspects. Your name. You, your name your, or your email address. Yeah. In one case, um, yeah. And if you share certain geolocation and sensor data from your phone. The idea, and this is something that I've talked about for like forever, since like 2012, is I'd, PII has been... It is such an obsolete definition mm -hmm. in this era of being able to piece together people just from bits Good of data. Point. So if you you cannot any sort of data when grouped with other data can become PII. And we have to oh, okay. update our legal definitions for that. Like if you think about when the New York Times did their thing about, hey, this is where Donald Trump we we you know, wandered around Florida based on his phone's geolocation. Those are the things like you take geolocation from a set of phones, you take publicly available information, suddenly you have PII. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's the point that our our laws haven't, they haven't adapted to that. And we need to get them to that place. So I'd agree, I will I'd say, agree with Jeff that uh, by itself, the IP address is, is basically public information because you, Sure. Are using it as you browse around. Every so site you, you go to knows yeah, it. But when you pair it with other stuff, it suddenly becomes an important marker of everything you do. So that's the problem. But right? it still it still needs, uh, Stacey makes an excellent point, put that in the history books too, that I said that. <laughs> but even then, then, then the problem is that if you say, okay, IP with anything else can be dangerous, then let us get rid of everything. It misses the practicality of a website has to know your IP address. Now, why Ring is sharing with a uh, a company in a in a financial relationship? I believe that should be transparent. I believe there should be they should be thinking about the benefit to the user and so on and so on and so on. So I, you know, I, I think the point's right, but there's the, the risk here is just that that there's been a creeping because Stacy's right that the, the the definition is limited. It's now crept into anything could be bad and anything could go wrong, and there's no more nuanced discussion in these so kinds of I stories. So I would <clears throat> well, I would say. Yes. That the issue here isn't necessarily, I mean, PII is important. I would say this, I feel that EFF or EEF, hold on, EFF was a little disingenuous by 
tackling some of these because some of these third parties that are the data is being shared with are things to make sure your 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 app or your content is rendering correctly on a certain type of device. They right. called out like Crashlytics. They called out Mixpanel, uh, Branch.io. Those are not. I would say they're not nefarious. What they are is they are trackers and they are pulling in a lot of data that can be used to track people individually. What I think is really the issue though, and I think they glommed onto Ring, everybody does this. I have Crashlytics running on my site, um, is mm. they glommed onto Ring because it was already in the news and people have it and blah, blah, blah. But mm -hmm. The real issue is we've built an entire ecosystem around tracking people to serve them ads. And I know we we talk about this all the time with the way the web is built, but this is a good time to say, hey, we built a whole web based on tracking. As we put more computers in more places, do we want to maybe figure out some other way to do this? And well, that's what Google's wish, doing, isn't it? For Google's it's, sake, it's it's try it's saying it's doing that. I don't know how well it's how, doing how, that. But how I, are they doing I'm, it? Other than just cutting off third party, third yeah. party cookies. Other it's, than that, how are they doing it? Well, actually, actually, they're the opposite. They're cutting off other mechanisms of doing this. Okay. Uh, well, and but but, so is the unique know. user any worse than having your IP if your IP really changes? Well, no, what they're saying is that unique user, it's more than just your IP. It's both you, it's sensor data from your phone. So mm -hmm. it's like where you might be in time and space. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'll so give you a really nasty example. I quit Facebook, right? Because I don't want Facebook to track me. But if I had a ring doorbell, it doesn't matter if I have a Facebook account. They still send all that information to Facebook. So fa this is part of that, those, what do they call them? Dark dossiers <laughs> that Facebook collects of people who are not Facebook members. Uh, I don't know what Facebook would want to do with that information, but the fact that they're getting it is kind of bothering me. This is five, this is the graph API. This this is really the real problem is that this data is being collated by a variety of companies. It's being shared yes. with multiple companies and ultimately builds quite a significant dossier on you. It's, it's that that it's being built, shared, and aggregated across so many places. And ultimately, it is being used to try to, to get you to either engage or to get you to buy things. And that's... But that's... Uh, I mean, how do you respond to Jeff saying, well, yeah, but wouldn't you rather have appropriate ads than meaningless I, ads? I'm, I would rather have appropriate ads when I need to have an ad, but... I'm not sure I need to have an ad every place. Like I certainly well, don't want to have problem. an ad. Well, <laughs> but you'd well and pay that's for but that's what I'm saying is is we have lost sight of other business models that could work and maybe trained us to respond only to advertising. I guess. But it, and that's, it, I am gonna. Uh, I'll tell you what. I'm not gonna have an ad in this show. That's it. <laughs> We're doing this one for free, folks. No, no, paywall's going up right now. Pay up, yeah, pay up, yeah. or we're going off here. That's it, paywall. No ads on this show, none, zero, zip, <laughs> nada. Well, there might be a little bit of mention of the last pass studio thing, but that, no, no other ads. Yeah, that, that no right other, just that, yeah, no that's other. It. <laughs> um, I, I, Stacey, if I did that for very long, I wouldn't have a much of it. I'm not yeah. saying that you shouldn't have your media content. You're different. No, I, and you in know, the Philip sense K. Dick wrote an article about a world where, where there were ads on every surface, right. and we were rapidly approaching that, where you can't go anywhere. Every on the table, on the chair, inside the car, everywhere, there's ads, and that's not well. And they're really also. Much. To serve what they feel would be better ads, they're pulling more and more data about people to more finely slice and dice their wants and needs. Mm. And that is a problem because the flip side of that, the darker side of having that those kind of dark dossiers or digital dossiers about people is they can be misused for surveillance or to do things that are maybe a little bit more nefarious and but that 
Go ahead, Jim. But, but, but as a consumer that's just a regular everyday consumer, does this not put us back into position of spray and pray ads that are coming to us as we use services that we don't pay for, whether it's television, Ding. radio, or whatever, and all of a sudden you're hearing ads about um, a smoking patch? I don't smoke, but... I think yeah. there. Well, I still get. I don't smoke, and I still get ads for. I wish stuff. Like, I don't want to see drug ads at all. Mm -hmm. I see them on the news channels constantly. Mm -hmm. I really you're don't. Old and, I don't want to. I was about see to say any. it's because you're a man of a certain age. I imagine. No, no, it's well, the news. That's the thing. It's broadcast. It's, it's, I wouldn't be seeing them if they were targeted. Stuff. Right. You know what, what, okay. what's the price we're going to pay as a consumer? Um, if we want to use these free services, I don't know? see those drug ads on as I surf the net. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're gonna give up free services altogether. And I think there's going to be a mix of these models, but I am concerned about the level of detail that's that companies are allowed to collect and trade on people. And I'm concerned when they go beyond advertising to get to things like, hey, now let's use this to price our products a little bit more competitively. Are you saying regulation? Why would that be bad? <laughs> that's a good thing, the precious price pressure to lower the price. Oh, no, I'm talking about pressure on consumers in terms of like, oh, they, they're they here. I mean, it's kind of like selling you a $20 umbrella when it's raining, right? Oh, you mean surge uh, pricing. Yeah. Gotcha. Yes. There, there, it goes both ways. And I will tell you in like the smart parking kind of examples and congestion things, yeah. on average, prices do go down. But when they go up, they go up real fast. Right. And real Isn't, bad. though, that Adam Smith's invisible hand working perfectly supply and demand do you really want the invisible hand working perfectly that assumes everyone starts out with you know the same situation <laughs> <laughs> that felt so monty python s for those listening there was Kevin an invisible hand, hand but on. it wasn't so invisible <laughs> it was visible for the well people listening, done, it was sir, that was quick that was that was howard stern show speed <laughs> i feel like i honestly feel like we are in late stage capitalism, uh, and well, you have the 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 head of LinkedIn declaring capitalism dead as he goes to his bank and counts his billions. Yeah, <laughs> he's Betting pulling off. up the ladder. That's all. Exactly. <laughs> Bingo. <laughs> Stacy, can I ask you two questions? Sure. The and in this order, please. First, what is the possible use that anybody could make, good or bad? of sensor data. And then second thus is what's your fear about what can be done with it? So sensor why, why, data why is it why is it being collected? What do they what do they want to do with it? And then what could they do with it that's bad? I guess that's maybe the better way to put it. Oh, so sensor data can include things like, hey, is my phone in my pocket? Is it like gyroscopic data, for example? It can be geolocation data. So where am I in the world? Um, what am I doing? Am I walking? Am I running? Am I sitting on the couch all day? Where am my... I get as a problem, but, but am I sitting? Is that a problem? Are we all sit? If, if well, you're sitting for 18 hours a day, uh, your, your insurance, health insurance company is going to say, yeah, that's probably okay. not good. All right. All right. That's fair. I mean, fair. so, so in, uh, granted, you know, there, again, I don't have problems with I just, this data can be used very invisibly. Like people are not necessarily aware of the decisions that are being made about the data that is being collected about them. And that's a problem because they can't counteract any misassumptions or uh, not misassumptions. What's the word I'm looking for? What's the word? Yeah. Jeez. False positives. <laughs> Misapprehensions? <laughs> yeah, the conclusions that may not be correct. Impermeable. Like, it's definitely, not. it's definitely not. I'm like, it's a great word. It's not what I'm after. But so they, they don't know. They don't know what they don't know, but they're being judged on these things. It's kind of like when you don't understand how your credit course credit score was developed and people will, uh -huh. and even some of the outrage against, you know, your, your social media profiles being used for that sort of thing. And you're like, well, Hey, is that right? Should we be doing that? Do we have any outside correlation, you know, like studies to say, yeah, this actually matters? Or is this just somebody's bias is coming into play and negatively affecting people? These are the things I'm worried about. Hmm. Vice.com leaked documents expose the secretive market for your web browsing data. 
This actually uh, is is a disappointing story uh, uh, about a company called Avast, which is a free antivirus. Mm -hmm. Lots of people used. I hope they don't use it anymore. Lots Avast, of people got it pre-installed, I believe. Yeah, mm -hmm. it acquired a company called Jumpshot. Uh, Avast, when it, when this free antivirus is installed on your system tracked everything you did every program you ran every not just the websites you visited everything you did google searches lookups of locations gps coordinates uh linkedin pages youtube videos porn sites it's possible to determine from the collected data what date and time the anonymized user visited you porn and porn hub in some cases, which search terms they entered into the porn site, which video they watched. It doesn't include your name, but as we well know, anonymized data can often be de-anonymized if there's enough data there. Jumpshot shared this and data, or some of the data it knows, with Expedia, IBM, Intuit, L'Oreal, and Home Depot. Um, there's a vast market for this kind of data. I know. Well, that. once again, there's been a vast market for that before <laughs> the internet. And I'm not saying that's but we right got it. We it got it, it so right. good but now. I mean, <laughs> it's an issue going on. Yeah. 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 Uh, well, and that's that's more of your data being collected, so you get a better picture, right? A more a higher resolution, and it's it's cheaper to crunch it. So before to develop a high resolution profile of anyone would take a lot of time. And you couldn't to, really do it because you just didn't have yeah. the data points. That's You'd why like, if I gave you the zip, they could say, well, you probably subscribe to these magazines and have this kind of car, but it's only probable with a 40 or 50 or 60% probability. Now they can say exactly what car they know, what car they know exactly what I subscribe mm -hmm. to. They know where I am, what I'm doing. I don't, but I guess the real fundamental question is, what are the harms of this? Were we upset when J. Edgar Hoover like weaponized the was it the FBI? Yes, for his own political ends. Yeah, I mean he told because Martin Luther King to kill himself. That's what you can do with this data. Yeah, you get that level of detail with many more people, mm. much less effort, much less money, and it's available not just to one crazy dude in power. But to anybody. Well, no, but the reason anybody. that that was bad was because he was in power, mm -hmm. right? If he's just a marketer, big deal. But it's because he could use the the the, the power of the federal government. You don't think the government can't call a vast and say, "Hey, I really want I this data so -so. on this person." Yeah. Right. Google's charging for it now. Come on. Yeah, Google stopped giving well, it Google's away. Google's not going to make money on it. Let's be clear of that. Google's I, just charging. I know. It. They're, they're the charging point a nuisance is So fee. many people are asking for it. They yeah. have They're charging a fee to try to create some friction for people asking. Right. A forty-five dollar fee is so not going to make valuable. Yeah, but and for some jurisdictions, that may cost a little bit of money for some folks. Not everywhere. Uh, this, I wonder if this will stand. Uh, I would imagine there there might be uh, some court that has something to say about this. They've, they're charging law enforcement for responding to search warrants and subpoenas. Seems to me you. Can <laughs> if if the if uh, a cops came to my door and said we have a search warrant to search your apartment and I said that'd be forty five dollars they might <laughs> they might say no it won't well but if they came to your landlord and made you made them change the lock on your apartment then yeah well I think if it's a if it's a legal subpoena I mean, I, a legal when search I ran, warrant when I ran local news sites it was it was costly yeah uh, uh, the worst we got was was um, police departments would constantly file search warrants and subpoenas and all kinds of stuff. You don't want frivolous ones. Somebody, no, yeah. no, no. What was happening was somebody on the force was complaining about a bad captain right. in our forums. And so the captain would come and use all of his legal authority to come after and try to get whoever the, the miscreant who didn't like, you know, that he shortened lunch hour. And um, we would get tons and tons and tons of them. And it was expensive because we had to do with lawyers every time and all that. So there's, mm. it's, it's, I think what Google's trying to do is put a little friction up. Yeah, that's the speculation. It apparently is legal if you uh, sustain costs to pass those costs back along. Uh, Google says that we're not going to ask for reimbursement in life-threatening emergencies or child or safety child invest stuff. investigations. Right, right. Yeah. So, but I know I'm going to hear the stories. I'm going to hear the stories. Google's making money off giving government our well, information. That's honestly, why a lot of companies refuse to do it. They don't want that impression. Right. Um, right, but... It is, it is something like other companies charge, like the telecommunications companies, they charge unless it's right. in the case of like missing right. children. And, I mean, police chief, uh, deputy police chief of Minnesota said, we don't 
see it imp impacting us too much. We're only using these warrants on major crimes, and the fees seem reasonable. Unlike when you go in as a journalist, you try to get a FOIA request, and they're like, it's going to charge you, a, we're going to charge you a fuck to print out these pages, and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Facebook does not charge. Microsoft and Twitter say they're legally allowed to request reimbursement, but decline to explicitly address whether they charge law enforcement for such requests. Cox and Verizon have done so for several years, according to the New York Times. So, yeah, that's, that's a kind of a non-story story. It's... Makes sense. I, the only re I, but I brought it up because Jeff wanted to understand why it matters that these companies have this sort of level of detail about people because there is interest in law and from law enforcement and the powers that be. Yeah. In but looking at I always whole... say government is not your protector of privacy. Government is the worst enemy of your privacy. Didn't didn't we government learn... can do something with it. Didn't we learn from the Cambridge Analytica scandal how, how powerful this data is and how it could be weaponized? Actually, uh, Ant, uh, the opposite. Every single person I know in this field has long made fun of Cambridge Analytica. They mm -hmm. were snake oil salesmen. They were nothing. Boz's post on Facebook two weeks ago just said Cambridge Analytica didn't have any secret sauce. They didn't know mm -hmm. diddly. Uh, and so the the... Um, but the media narrative is, oh, my God, Cambridge Analytica alone got Trump elected. No, it was it was a sales pitch from Kushner and company, mm. and they're full of junk. But that's the media narrative. But what? But didn't they still get just, I guess it is pretty common analytics, though, just to see what the temperature or, 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 or the mood of a particular demographic is during a certain well, period. Well, yeah, and, like and, that. And, 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 you know, this is the, the two-edged sword here mm -hmm. um, that – uh, the platforms were getting a lot of crap for not opening up data, and 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 it was people loved the fact they had a platform, and mm -hmm. it was all everybody saw that at the time as a good thing, It was a wonderful thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can go use this platform, and 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 we wanted free academics. Oh, it's Cambridge University for God's sakes, mm -hmm. academics fine, mm -hmm. and um, the unintended consequence. See, my favorite example of this uh, of, of late. And uh, this is a Benedict Evans point that he made in his newsletter, which I highly recommend. I think Ben's brilliant at this stuff. Um, when the LinkedIn decision came out, what, a year ago, saying that that, that LinkedIn tried to stop scraping of LinkedIn. Oh, yeah, other, I remember that. And the court case said, no, it's, it's basically been made public to this extent that it's there. And however I get at it, I can get at it and I, and I can scrape. And everybody said, hallelujah, freedom of the net, wonderful thing. Well, then when the New York Times did its expose, of, oh my God, they're scraping your photos and using them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The LinkedIn decision enables that, right? Yeah. So there's always going to be an, 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 an equal reaction in these cases. And people are going to find things to exploit. And so that the problem I have is the, if we only did this one thing, we'd solve the problem, is always simplistic and yeah. dumb. It doesn't, it doesn't deal with the potential misuse that continues, the unintended consequences, the intended consequences, right. um, and, and all that. So... I got a moral panic for you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no. The Interior Department. <laughs> Poor Stacey's really worried. Stacey's worried for us. <laughs> the U.S. Department of Interior Size. is adopting a no-fly rule aimed at drones made in China or with Chinese parts. I defy you to find a drone that is not made yeah. in China. Yeah. Not a one. This is period. Uh, now, this isn't... That doesn't mean you can't fly it, and It means, though, that the government... We'll stop flying drones for the most part. And that could be a big problem because drones save lives. Uh, you know, And they, they ha actually help get work done, too. Yeah, they Not save money. Not just cinematic yeah. stuff. They just Interior help get officials work done. recorded 10,000 drone flights in 2018, Alaska, Hawaii, Oregon, and California. That was double the number the year before. Mm. It saved at least $14 million by using drones instead of helicopters or airplanes. Not to mention safety. Yep. People die, as we know, die in helicopters and airplanes. Um, U.S. Forest Service, Service firefighter died in March in a helicopter crash in Texas. Now we're going to be putting people back in harm's way, said an Interior Department firefighter based in Alaska. It's a real step back for us. Oh, but thank goodness the Chinese won't be able to see <laughs> our forests. Uh, I guess well, the theory is Chinese-made drones are somehow... If they have spyware on them, yeah, the worry is, is of spying or backdoors. I will say <laughs> that a lot of people use drones for like running for oil pipelines and in tracking like for leaks and such like that along valuable infrastructure. So 
is it secret exactly that those things are there? I don't think so. No. But, you know, having having a more detailed view, I mean, I think we're a little paranoid, but I also think the data is out there. Chinese manufacturer so, DJI makes the most popular yeah. top mm-hmm. of the line drones. It's the drones. The Matrice line. They use. The Matrice well, line is really big. Well, also Phantoms and, mm-hmm. uh, and, and, and all of those other companies. Are cons- I use Autel. They're another Chinese company. Yeah, well, there you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, DJI said it's disappointed that the new interior policy, quote, inappropriately treats a technology's country of origin as a litmus test for its performance, security, and reliability. They say it's a politically motivated agenda to reduce market competition and support domestically produced drone technology regardless of where, its where those domestic uh, we're going to have drones? to create a uh, we're going to have to get going and create a domestic drone industry shoot us an email here at twit please is parrot <laughs> is parrot in the i thought parrot was chinese also there they there were the first drones you know quadcopters i saw um but i yeah i bet they are i mean yeah i thought is this was... I, this seems to me like I understand the security issue, but uh, boy, it just feels like it's more about politics than anything. It's else. Uh, very, very hundred percent. It's um, harassment. Yeah. By and doing this, I hope it does. The problem is when policy isn't based on policy. When policy is based on self-interest, whether national or personal, um, it's French. That's it's that's French. the problem. Parrot is French. That's oh, right. the policy based on personal interest. I do not want any French drones flying over our oil pipelines. Yeah. That's a vacuum cheese the recipe from the <laughs> Sesto. I want Liberty drones. <laughs> Liberty drones. <laughs> none, of these, drones. none of these French drones. I love the flags I bet, that Mr. Kevin's putting up. I bet, though, many of the parts are made in China, which, which would then make them also. Yeah, banned. still be Chinese. Then. Yeah, they still be banned. We're back to that again. Yeah. It, even with this whole banning, if you will, it, one would, would say, hey, well, maybe this will spark an interest of getting something here homegrown and whatnot, but I doubt it, right? <laughs> no. Hey, uh, interesting story about ransomware and Bitcoin. Um, there uh, apparently was a ransomware case. Um, a company... Uh, fell victim. Company, actually, no. I'm sorry. The the uh, the Nunavut government, that's a province in Canada, was crippled by Bitcoin ransomware in November. Uh, fortunately, they were insured by a UK insurer, which paid one point. Actually, they negotiated down to nine hundred thousand dollars. They were asking for one point two million in Bitcoin. They ended up paying a ninety six Bitcoin ransom and uh but but they did that didn't sit right with them so they followed the they followed the bitcoins and this is a problem with bitcoin they're traceable to uh bitfin x a major bitcoin exchange and they say we now want to know actually this happened in november the court documents have just become public we want to know who owns those coins and we want them back hmm uh, the document, unfortunately, uh, the document trail ends December 13th. Maybe we'll find out more. But it's interesting because it doesn't necessarily mean the holder of those Bitcoins is the person who committed the ransomware crime. In fact, I bet it's unlikely. Possibly. They probably sold it to somebody who then right. brought it to Bitfinex and tried to turn it into cash or is holding it there. But it's an important point uh, just for you ransomware uh, fellas out there that Bitcoin is completely traceable. So you got to be a little oh. bit, a little bit careful about uh, about using Bitcoin. Monero apparently is not. So. I once sat with somebody from the Federal Reserve um, at a, I think it was a Qualcomm event, and they talked about how they they love Bitcoin because it is yeah. traceable. Yeah, they're like, yes, it's wonderful for us. I don't know why people keep thinking that it's you know super special and that we can't track it. We can. None of it is not a <laughs> province; it's a territory. Oh, okay. It's in the far. I'd north. never heard of that. Oh yeah, it's, it's in Canada. There. It's in the Arctic Circle. Yeah. Yikes! It's it's one of the provinces First we station. don't know. <laughs> um, inter- I just thought that was interesting. Here's also an interesting story. I said this to Ian Thompson. Hey, there's some good news about Brexit. The uh, UK, which will be exiting Britain momentarily, 
uh, has said they will not adopt the new EU copyright law. Oh, boy. Including I think it's actually Article 15, but anyway. Well, there's two articles, 13 15 and 17. 15. It used to be 13 yeah. and 15. Now That's it's right. They moved them around. Yeah, yeah. Um, the UK was one of 19 nations who initially supported the copyright directive, but uh, <laughs> universities and science minister Chris Skidmore <laughs> has now said it will not be implemented in the UK. So... I'm, for one, happy. It's a yeah. horrible law. Yeah. Um, it's the one that says uh, you can't Brexit, have a meme but... that's more than 120 pixels across. Well, and... That's the that's the German. No, that's the German, <laughs> the German uh, interpretation of it. Yeah, that's the new <laughs> Leistungsschutzrecht. 120 pixels uh, across for a meme, and what was the other uh, oh, limitation? Uh, how many set? Like three seconds for video. Three, three seconds. seconds for video. Wow. Uh, yeah. Well, and the, and the French version of it is telling Google you have to pay to uh, print a snippet in oh, your link that's to that's right. I remember the snippet Which chat. Google's going to say, we're going to well, take out the snippets. We'll no put the snippets. link in. We're going to yeah. take out the snippet. Eric Duckman uh. in our chat room says, I, for one, welcome a meme ban. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> There's something I noticed. Do your kids do this? Aunt? Uh, this is a thing now. And I find it really disturbing. Instead of conversation at the dinner table, kids will show each other meme pictures. No, I And then I they'll sit there it. like that and then go... And then oh, my God, say, that's my daughter's life. I yeah. Know, I don't... They, they, they sit there and, um, well, they trade memes back and forth, and then they, they say them. Like, their conversations aren't, they, they devolve into meme speak. It's away, really uh, away from the dinner table, maybe, but not at the dinner table. See, Leo, <laughs> this is the return to oral culture. It's not text. It's images. Audible. It's, is is atollery a word? Uh, <laughs> It's one your editor might cut out. It's not a word you can say. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Bondi. Uh, <laughs> it's hey. fun. I, it's very cute. Yeah. Like, not the word. The meme, the meme exchanges. I am impermeable. Impervi impermeable to... <laughs> Asshole. Okay. <laughs> BuzzFeed News Editor Ben Smith going to the New York Times. New York Times Yay. has been steal, snapping up all the best people in the uh, blogosphere. They have all the money. Good for them. That's where all the money is. Ben S is brilliant. So the, David uh, Carr used to write a, a wonderful column, yes. Media Equation. He passed away, God, it's hard to believe, five years ago now. Yeah. Uh, somebody else is writing it. We don't know who he is because nobody reads it. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Nice guy, but nobody reads it. And John Harriman? No, 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 no. That's the tech version. It's uh, what's his name? Um, it says it there, I think. Yeah, it says it. <laughs> he's how soon he's forgotten. Can you believe I, nobody knows. I feel so uh, bad for this I poor guy. I know the guy. Jim nice Ruttenberg. Guy. Jim Ruttenberg. Ruttenberg. I feel bad for you, Jim. I'm sorry. <laughs> he has moved to a position called writer at large. That means we don't know what to do with you, but uh, <laughs> you, you got you cover stuff. Actually, it could be a great job. You know. Uh, ben Smith will be the new media columnist of the New York Times. So Ben took the land of lists and cats and BuzzFeed. added on to it, yeah. BuzzFeed, and added on to it a very serious news organization, an excellent news organization. The problem so has always been, yes, isn't it, it doesn't make any money. Because I still think of it as the land of memes and cats. I'm always like, I'm like, dang, this is a good story. Yes. And I'm like, what? I'm always surprised. Mm -hmm. Whoops. When I, yeah. And I, I've been doing this for like years. I've been quoting BuzzFeed News and I feel like I feel like an idiot. But in fact, these are so they have some good stuff in there. Yeah. The good news is the respectability. Yep. The bad news is there's still no business in serious news. Yeah. And so, you know, I worry about Ben leaving for the future of BuzzFeed News. We'll see. We'll see what Jonah Purdy does. But Ben himself is a, is a wonderful writer, ex politico, uh, wonderful thinker about media. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm really happy he's made this move. I think it'll be it'll be great. Could so be bad. That's for very a... media wonkish inside. Yeah. Well, no, I, that's uh, that's us. Media wonkish or us. Um, it is good news for times. It's kind of bad news for BuzzFeed. Maybe I don't know. Maybe they have it somebody. Is. It is. It is definitely. Some, but... Back to memes and cats. Back to memes Buzzfeed and cats. Will be... No, they still have like Matt Honan and some other people, don't they? I well, they have, they have really Matt good reporters. They have great reporters. Yeah, they have BuzzFeed reporters. News is quite separate from the listicles. Right. The listicles, look at it this way. The listicles are the bridge column and sports section that subsidize the news. Okay, gotcha. As long as Jonah Peretti, the founder, can see it that way and convince his shareholders of that, 
Hallelujah. Okay. But if he ever gets bought by private equity or the open market, they're going to say that new stuff doesn't make any money. Yeah, maybe it it makes advertisers uh. a little happier, but eh, they don't even like news anyway. I mean, I, I, at the salon where I was this week, the media people, sorry. <laughs> They're were, calling from the what, salon what, saying, what, 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 is that a landline? It was what Buzzer was House that? News. We <laughs> told you Chatham, Fox, Chatham House Rules. Chatham House Rules. Because he's Sorry. Buzz Machine. Oh, wait a minute. No, Rule. Does he have Chatham a House switch? Rule? <laughs> There's only one rule. That's how you show off, as letting people know that. Um, so there were people in the room, major advertisers and major agencies in the room, who said, uh, well, we just don't want to advertise. Number one, they don't want to advertise on news because it's dangerous, which is really dangerous for the democracy. And if they do advertise on news, they say we don't want to advertise on opinion. So opinion becomes lethal for advertising support, which is why we have no ads today, because we have opinions. <laughs> Normally here, I would take a break. <laughs> 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 and I've decided no more ads. None. You just... As somebody said on Twitter, just watch us go down the tubes. Uh, tech in 2020, finally, the moment you've all been waiting for. How many slides in Benedict Evans' annual well, slide deck? But it's it's very it's not as many as Mary Meeker. No. Not nearly as many numbers. It's more strategic thinking. So this is, but you think this is better than Mary's because it has. Well, because it's more it's more thought provoking. I think yeah. Mary Meeker gives you gives you it gives you ammunition for the strategy you want to sell. Right. This pushes you to think about strategies you haven't thought of. Um, so he's going for the kind of the next S curve. And what he's arguing is the next S curve is going to be regulation. Oh, yeah. Well, a lot of people think that, including. It's going to be a giant, giant structure yeah, of regulation yeah. here. Um, but we, he says that we really have connected almost everyone now. Five, of, of five and a half billion adults on Earth, five billion have a phone, four billion have a smartphone. Actually, I just read an article singing the praises of Elon Musk's new Starlink enterprise to put gigabit Internet within every reach of every person on earth who said only half the population is on the internet and i think that's probably accurate yeah but bringing crazy, that right? other half onto the internet will be a game changer mm -hmm. so we'll grant you we might debate when that happened but um fully online about three yeah, if you go minutes. dashing through some of the slides new technologies come in s curves you can, you can dash through some of these stupid obviously. exciting yeah. boring <laughs> uh, smartphones have now reached boring. They went. They started as stupid, then they were exciting, but now they're boring. But they're all the same. What becomes possible now that smartphones are mature and widely deployed? What is the next generational change? Because you get these S curves as like m sub cycles of a larger graph: mainframes, PCs, webs, smartphones. What's next after smartphones? What happens when everyone's online? What are the next S curves? He says, oh, dear, regulation and policy. We, that's all we talk about, really. Uh, yeah, it is. What happens when everyone's Stay on life? life. <laughs> Standing on the shoulders of giants, new possibilities at scale. Every failed idea from the dot-com bubble would work now, said Mark Andreessen. Pets.com, would that work now? Yeah, we, um, I, we, that's where we get our, um, it got bought I by Amazon. I ordered my dog food and, online. See? Yeah. Do you get your yeah. kitty litter online? I get I my food that. online. Bill Gross, Bill Gross, who started <laughs> Pets.com, was a good friend of mine, um, found the, the key point in timing in success of a business is timing. And he did Pets.com and it was too early. Yeah. But yeah, now it works. Yeah, look at podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> he said bitterly. <laughs> he said bitterly. <laughs> Front of mind, e-commerce. E-commerce is big. Now over half, half a trillion dollars. <laughs> Wow, in e-commerce sales in the However, U.S. However, only 15% of addressable retail, because addressable retail in the U.S. is 3.6 trill. Globally, the U.S. is in the middle of the pack. China's that number one. Me. U.K. is way ahead of us. U.K. and Singapore way ahead. We're, then France, Japan, Germany, Russia, Brazil, India. Uh, and originally, e-commerce was books. Now it's everything. Originally, there was one model, Amazon. Now, there's many models. Uh, originally, uh, I don't know, Capital Now Platforms. I don't know what that means. I don't, I'm not that smart. Uh, powering the D2C explosion. Direct to consumers. All our advertisers are direct to consumer. Many of our advertisers are direct. Those that aren't business to business. Like Casper, that's direct to consumers, right? Mm -hmm. All the shaving brands that we've advertised, direct to consumers. Um 
So that's a, a absolute. You see that here for sure. Huge new e-commerce platform. Shopify market cap forty six billion. Stripe thirty five billion. Shopify has. Come I didn't realize how big Shopify. Is. I had no idea either. I don't use Shopify. Really? Well, you, you probably do. You just don't realize that yeah, when you buy random stuff online, that's right. Oh, right, right, right. The back so end. it's behind. It's, it's Shopify inside. Yes, that's okay. the thing. It's it's the. Uh, but it's but dwarfed I don't, I don't by Amazon. I don't know that I'm using the platform. I mean, yeah. I imagine Amazon really is the is the big competition, yes. right? Yes. Meanwhile, oh, speaking of Amazon. which, Amazon, its revenue grows thirty percent a year. Only half is direct e-commerce. But it's more than just plain e-commerce. Platforms for others are now a third of Amazon revenue. Yeah, AWS, Marketplace. I mean, we know Marketplace is almost half of Amazon. Uh, ads. Amazon is a platform. $10 billion search ad business. New retailing, new taxes. <laughs> Boy. Oh, that tax thing still bugs me, though. Why? I mean, you have to have taxes to pay for well, services. This is, this is I'm sure I paid tax. more in taxes than Amazon did. Oh, that <laughs> no. tax. I thought we were yeah. talking no, about this taxes is not, on Shopify. No, he's not saying either of those things. He's not saying either of those things. He's saying that Amazon is charging you now. Yeah. It's like the grocery store charges you for end cap. Right. Amazon's charging right. for that. It's a tax they can now put on because they own the marketplace. Right. Put gotcha. it on yes. retailer. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. sorry. I was like, wait. Yeah. I'm, 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 so instead of tax, <laughs> use the word vig. Yeah, there we like go. That. The vig. The vig. <laughs> um, if you're not, uh, this is interesting, a new route to awareness. If you're not paying rent for a store or in one, how do people hear about you? Amazon sells placement. Booking in Expedia, pay Google, $10 billion. But Macy's and Walmart did this too. Meanwhile, there's Kylie Jenner's makeup business, which is worth $1.2 billion, based on what? Instagram, Instagram right? Instagram. Mm -hmm. And their Instagram is not getting a cut yet. Oh, this is good. All about Casper. Get it wrong. Go to the mattresses. A vacuum-packed mattress was a brilliant idea until everyone did it. There are now, Casper started wow. it, but there are now 175 online mattress companies. Yikes. You know, it's Yeah, funny. and when they went and did their valuation, their, their IPO, they're looking now at, instead of a billion dollars being a unicorn, they're at like $750 million. Oh, I love oh, you, Casper. Poor Bookless. I there's love been you. A, there's been a couple of times I'd hear in a mattress ad. I don't necessarily know if it was Casper or not, but it, the ad started out with, yes, we are on a podcast, and yes, we are a mattress company. Oh, you know? boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's, oh so boy. it's clearly watering down. Yeah. You know? <laughs> uh, is Casper a tech company, or is it a mattress company with a website? <laughs> <laughs> the internet is not the first time retail's had a new format. Department stores, warehouse clubs, and superstores, now e-commerce. Half our store sales involve an online journey, says Eric Nordstrom, and over a third of our online sales involve a store experience. That's interesting. So they go hand in hand, right? Retail isn't as binary as online or offline. Uh, front of mind, TV. Oh, my God. <laughs> Annual change in U.S. pay TV subscriptions. Boy, if I'm Comcast, I'm looking at this thinking, oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. It was zero, close to zero for 2011, 2012, 2013, and then it went negative. It is now negative 7% annually. That's a drop. Comcast isn't worried. That's why they bought NBC way back in the day. Uh, they yep. bought, con they're a content company now. And an internet company, and you still need to get the internet. Right. That's the thing, and they still have the pipes. Still. And that, that was the big thing, like when we started looking at pricing way back in the day for like the broadband caps, which, you know, are a thing. Still, unfortunately, when you looked at their pricing, they were basically trying to reach the pricing of the triple play. So keeping it right. and they've done a good job actually oh, yeah. maintaining it about one hundred and twenty bucks a I, month. I tell the cord cutters that all the time. You, you can cut the cord, but it ain't going to save you money. No, because they've been preparing for this. How about this one? Pay TV share of U.S. teen viewing hours is down half in the last three years. <laughs> Netflix and YouTube, particularly Netflix, uh, YouTube going up. Netflix actually trailing down a little bit. The TV looks the worst. That's pay TV. The content wars have begun. A third of U.S. content spending last year came from streaming companies. Shocking. Look at look at <laughs> look at Netflix. Almost fifteen billion dollars. Streaming is a third of U.S. television production. Mm. New forms. You know, of video. I will say it's kind of heartening to Stay see old shows come ahead. back. Like, yeah. you know, it, it, things feel a little, I mean, 
I'm, I'm trying to think of shows. You're starting that were actually to sound good, like but... an old timer. <laughs> no, I just I'm I, so I, I glad think Friends is back on TV. No, but my daughter and I are, are watching Thirty Rock, and you know. Oh man, that's back. No, it's not back. No, she's it's not back. Reruns. It's just, oh, okay. We're just watching the reruns on. Oh, okay. You know, but she. David she's... Schwimmer just proposed an all black or all Asian Friends. Yeah, because you know you can't really have friends with mixed race. That would just be a. Oh, yeah. oh gotcha. <laughs> Stay on, stay on Twitch for a second. I don't want to do that. <laughs> really? That's called miscegenation. <laughs> Twitch is already... Twitch. Well, so there's an interesting story. He's talking about uh, new kinds of television production. Right. right? New forms of video emerging. Twitch, 90% of live game viewing hit 1 billion mm. monthly hours in the third quarter of last year. But guess what? It's only about the size of a UK TV channel. Nowhere near Netflix or even total UK TV. Look at global. No, but it Twitch. also changes the form. I mean, it's and I don't watch Twitch. It, but but it's have not you seen the reality shows on Twitch? No. Negative. What do they look Those like? Weird. They're they're just people having other people over. They're they're like <laughs> Google that. Show they're real people. reality. Are they vlogs? Is what they're you're saying? They're real reality, not this they're phony scripted. reality. They're, I think they're sort of scripted. Okay. Um, you know, I think I'm going to do here. a Twitch feed. It's just me reading Twitter. Can I just point angry. out? That's how Twitch began. Twitch was originally Justin TV. Mm -hmm. Justin TV oh, started right, with yeah. Justin Kahn, who wore a camera and on his head. I loved and it. And walked around the all backpack. the time. Yeah. I Justine. I Justine followed because it was <clears throat> Justin TV. She, they, he, she did it too. And uh, that drove a lot of traffic. That was the original reality, real reality mm -hmm. TV. It's interesting. It's coming back to Twitch. We're, you know what? Humans are voyeurs. We like to look at other people and see what they're doing. Sometimes. I think we do you okay admit it Aunt. you're walking down the street it's <laughs> nighttime windows open curtains open lit up you look in the house you see what they're doing you see what they're watching you watch no you I, I normally just smell because I'm wondering what they're cooking <laughs> what, can you smell what the neighbor's cooking oh, what are they cooking I smell before I look it's true I do that too <laughs> I he doesn't garbage. snoop he sniffs right <laughs> uh, global effects from US streaming where budgets were always bigger but they showed <laughs> sold shows abroad Netflix goes direct I don't this is just showing the the, the, Netflix is the UK's biggest TV channel. Is he in the UK? Is that why he keeps talking about the UK? Half of Netflix base and most of the user growth is now outside the US. That's only because they reach saturation in the US. There's a point beyond which you can't grow. In business, there are two ways to make money, says Jim Barksdale. You can bundle or you can unbundle. <laughs> that is, I mean, that's... Yeah. One or the other. So it's interesting, and actually Ben Thompson's talked about this a little bit too, where we, we for a long time, we wanted to unbundle everything and disaggregate everything, and then it just kind of turns around again and you start rebundling. I would argue we never really unbundled, because real unbundling, I would be able to just say, I want to watch that show, that show, right. that show, and that right. movie. Mm -hmm. Is you still have to buy it. Well, channel. we did well, music, we did, but music then we got unbundled, and it's been great for yeah. and then listeners. It did it? Albums aren't back. No, not albums, but but you got to subscribe to a service, right? Yeah, you don't right, buy ninety nine cent records. Or whatever. What makes yeah. you say albums aren't back? It's just because of the the physical form, or Steve Jobs when he told the record companies we are going to sell singles for ninety nine cents, the record companies hit the roof mm -hmm. because artists and record companies wanted you to buy the a whole link. album. Right. They didn't want to sell singles of every single song. They picked the hit single maybe, but they didn't. They wanted to sell the album. And they thought we're going to die. Maybe they have. It certainly impacted revenue. But Steve said, "I'm doing it anyway," and, un and effectively unbundled music. Yeah, but people. But you still, still buy get albums. albums I mean, look at in I'd, albums. I would argue have gotten way more interesting. Mm -hmm. You look at like what well, Beyonce did with Lemonade. Le well, I know, but to. that's that's kind of good. In, the, in my era, an album was two or three hits. Yeah, <laughs> a, bunch a bunch of, of crap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. And you I had agree. to buy it. Uh, now you get Beyonce said, "Look, we got to make yeah, we got to make this worth people's while. We got to sell the whole thing." And she, I think Lemonade's a very good example. Yeah. Now the great unbundling is coming. Next, the great rebundling. Mm -hmm. The great Mandela. It's like the Big Bang, you know. It just it's a cycle. Is that a tech company or a TV company using a new channel? Okay, commer commerce. So e -commerce. stay on that for a second, if you would. Stay on that for a second, right? Okay. This is this is my argument that the internet is not a medium that media become part of the internet along with every other sector, that the internet as a, as a connecting machine and data machine becomes encompassing. So then, then the, the, the joke that everybody wants to be a tech company, 
uh, because they thought they had some software. I, I, it was, I, I, I was wrong, you know, in, in, in my conceptualization of that argument, or it was, the argument was wrong. But now every company is a tech company because we're all tech. Yes. Right. Right. So, so what this week at Google is thus about everything. Well, does that mean we should talk about Google again? Is that what we're trying to get back to? <laughs> I'm just asking for a friend. I'm just asking. <laughs> friend in the chat room. A lot of friends in the chat room. <laughs> nope. nope. I think you just, wouldn't enjoy you know. this show if all we talked about was Google. Um, Would you? Probably not. No. No. Okay. I don't, I don't all know. right. No. Right. I'm like, I, I'm getting a headache. So I'm like, uh, I don't know if I right. enjoy the show right, all right. at this moment. But that's just me. It's no, time for Stacy's pick of the week. Well, well, let her talk about what, what about the, the spectrum? Log in? What about the spectrum? the spectrum? It's time for the Google change log. <laughs> the Google change log. I don't have a dog in this hunt. I'm doing this show for free. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. I'll talk about whatever you want. I don't care. You got a headache? Let's go home. On us. No, no, I'm not. I'm just I'm like, I'm feeling less articulate over time. And I wasn't great to begin with. Welcome to the club. <laughs> Google Drive can now be used as a progressive <laughs> web app. Now you have to be using a browser that understands that. And you can then click a download link and it will be able to work offline. It'll be an app, which is kind of cool. Actually, Google's been doing this all along. I didn't realize this. Google's been the number one proponent of progressive web apps. The idea that a web page could have could be in effect installed on a computer or a mobile device that service workers in the browser would keep it running even when it was offline. Uh, this is good for Chromebooks, which is why Google's all in on this. Uh, but it's also handy for, you know, anybody who wants to work offline in Drive. Apps like Docs and Sheets still open up, unfortunately, uh, in the browser. So they're going to have to get so those to PWAs. A, a nothing burger. No, the Drive is there, though. But, but yeah. But every time I click on anything on that, I, so I have it open right now. It has to go to the web because you're not storing the data yet. <laughs> so nothing. Yeah. Burger. So yeah. nothing burger. Well, like here's a good example. YouTube Music is now a PWA. It doesn't mean the entire library of songs is downloaded. Yeah. But but the app itself is, and if you have cached benefit? songs, well, if you have cached material, it's offline. Performance. Yeah. And but performance. I can do that. That's I right. can do that That's without right. PWA on on Drive. All my stuff is offline in my well, Chromebook because that's the first step I to have PWA. no prop. Yeah. I have no registry. I have all my stuff. <laughs> I have Chromebook. Just rub it in, Ridge. Edit. Rub it in. Well, I have a coupon to our local <laughs> ice cream store. They just sent me on my Apple Watch. So I'll see you all later. All right. <laughs> La -la. Stadia is a PWA. Photos is a PWA. Messages is. Well, I, do, uh, I like PWAs, but. I love PWAs. I love I the notion. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, well, it's kind of silly to have something that requires online access to be a PWA, but mm -hmm. you could, in theory, have cached many of it. I actually download all my Google Drive docs uh, so that they're on my hard drive. Most power users do, yeah. anyway. It's faster that way. It's, you hit that. You nailed on the hit on the head on the nail of the net <laughs> of the thing. <laughs> Where, where's the rest of the change log? Oh, here it is. Google is killing. What's next on the block? Google won today. I don't even know. No one, no one knew it. What yeah. is it? Yeah, it I saw this thing. and I was like, what? It's yeah. an <laughs> app-based donation system you've probably never heard of, haven't used, and won't miss. Like Act Blue? Uh, yeah, I guess. They didn't Android push it Police. that much. It was an easy way to support nonprofit causes, showing how money that was donated was actually going to be used. Oh, this is a great idea. I remember it being announced, <laughs> but they didn't necessarily yeah. push it. You probably spent an hour on another show saying this is perfect and wonderful. It's the a, future, I yeah. think I remember, actually. It was a pick yeah. of the week at one point. The problem is Google did nothing to promote it. Exactly. What? And Google just like threw a, a new service over the wall and didn't talk to anybody about it? <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Google. Uh, so if you're technically brilliant or useful solution that that they don't help people learn how to but use. But no. we do have our tenth messaging app ready to roll. Oh, there's that. <laughs> it's all written in in Wave. Google <laughs> is wave. rolling out a new media view for the Nest Hub smart displays. I love my Nest Hub. Mm -hmm. I have a Nest Hub and Nest Hub Max. I love them. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. Yeah. I, you know, the, just the just the slideshow of pictures is good, 
But now you can control playing music across a whole speaker group. Oh, who does that? Uh, oh, yes, Sonos. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh, we didn't discuss oh. your victory. What, what was the problem with Sonos it again? It wasn't a big victory. <laughs> Trust they me. didn't offer anything. No. Anyway. Sonos kind of sort of backed down, but not really. They basically uh, said, look, we realize you're upset about this. and uh, It'll we're work gonna... until it doesn't. Right. <laughs> we're going to be nicer about how we phrase this It'll for work. you. Wow. Until it doesn't. Uh, the new Nest Hub Media View can control music across a speaker group or an individual device. You can see which devices are, are playing, the room it's in, the content provider, the song show title, the artist name. This is great. This is this is an interface to a Sonos-like multi-room experience. Sure. I'm going to get more Nest Hub devices. Although... Uh-oh, that dooms them. The speakers, <laughs> the speakers aren't great. I, I think I, it's pretty good. It's not bad for the size, but I would like maybe some uh, 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 interface to a better stereo or something like that. That's one of the things Sonos did that I liked, mm -hmm. the Sonos Connects. Mm. Eh. I'm not throwing out the Sonos. I'm just going to wait till it dies. So uh, with Sonos, do you, have, do you have double speakers in rooms or a single speaker? Oh, speakers? yeah. Why, in some rooms, Jeff Jarvis, I have five speakers. <laughs> So we have a full rich sound. I have for full rich sound. I have a sound bar. I have surround uh, sounds. I have a subwoofer. Woofer? Yeah. And so you have a woofer or just a subwoofer? <laughs> subwoofer. I have in many rooms, I have like the kitchen, I have a left and right play five, but I also have the little portable Sonos moves because of Ant and his family. When they came over to dinner, I mm -hmm. had to unplug. The Sonos Play 5s and bring them outside and hope it didn't rain. But now I have waterproof Sonos Moves. Oh, yeah, next you're time you come over, there. music in everywhere, in the hot tub and everywhere. Sweet. I'll be there tonight. Yeah. Come on over. <laughs> App makers shutting down. Crickets. No, that's okay. Yeah. I'm sad about Brad Fitz. We love Brad Fitz. He's leaving. He uh, His last project, 10 years working on the Go language. But... Uh, Brad Fitzpatrick's been a big part of uh, Google for many, many years. Look at all the things. He joined Google in 2007, worked on the Social Graph API, webified the Google open source CLA process, worked on Gmail's back end for a bit, integrated personal address book search into Google's main search, rewrote Memcached, which is a critical tool, not just for Google, but uh, for, ev for everybody. The Google Memcache server continues to be used by many teams. Fixed a bunch of performance bugs in Android when it first came out. Worked on the Android framework team. Added Android strict mode. Oh, God, it goes on and on. He started Go for various Android analysis tasks 10 years ago. Worked on the Go team for a long time. He is moving on after 12 years, five months at Google. Wow. 25 desks, 53 offices, three CEOs, <laughs> one stock split, one company split, eight managers. He met his wife at Google. He has five and a half hours of unused massage credits he'll <laughs> never use. He has many Google internal uh, change lists, 3,000 Android change lists, 10,000 Go change lists, 15 Go releases. Man. Brag much, Mr. Fitz? Why is he leaving? No, he's not bragging. No. This man has a CV longer than your arm, no. and you have a long arm. No. <laughs> he is a little bored, he says. Not learning as much as I used to, but doing the same things too long, and I need yeah. a change. I feel you on that. Also, bro. I'm filthy rich. <laughs> yeah, That's awesome. I am quitting to spend more time with my money. That's no, right. He didn't say that. That's right. Uh, when he first joined Google, it was a chaotic first couple of years while I learned Google's internal code base, build system, and a bunch of new languages. Uh, I don't want to get stuck in a comfortable rut, and Google certainly is comfortable except for the open floor plans. What's next? <laughs> Nobody likes open floor plans. Oh, bless Nobody. his heart. <laughs> he has not announced what's next, but he's building something new. That's an engineer talking right Fitz. there. <laughs> open floor Aww. plans. Aww. That's a that's a change Good log, you. right? He's, Good on you. He's Brad Fitzpatrick. One of the he was a neat guy too, just a nice guy. He's not he's not dead. He's not dead. <laughs> he right. is a neat guy. He does have five and a half hours of massage credits left. Can I have those, Mr. Fitz? <laughs> <laughs> just take one long massage. No. Google Translate is getting a transcribe mode. I love the transcribe mode in the recorder. I use it all. Just the other day, yep. I was listening to a book, 
And I thought, that's a great passage. I want to write that down. And I thought, oh, I don't have to. I'll just record it in Google Translate, Google Copy. Recorder. And I got it. And so, then where do you do What do you do with it then? Uh, I paste it into my new thing. What's your Which new is? Thing? Rome Research. Do you know about Rome? All a right. note-taking tool for networked thought. Interesting. Huh. I am Hello, not going to go Rome all... Spelled. R-O-A-M. I'm not going to go all in on it because it's cloud-based... It's brand new. It just got released. But it's really interesting because you can enter in. It's like a wiki, but it does backlinking automatically. It's more it's hmm. more free-flowing than a wiki. And the idea is it's somewhere you would take notes, keep track of things. Is this like Dave Weiner's outlining? Sort of, but, really? but free, much more free-form. Not very unstructured. Uh, and, so there's, and so you can add structure as you want. I think it's really an interesting tool. So uh, anyway, that's what I've been spending some time. I won't show you my, because my, it's almost like a journal for me. What's the uh, URL? Uh, RomeResearch.com. Anyway, one of the things I've been putting in there is, it, it, it's uh, one of the articles I read, a uh, guy uses it to take notes while he's writing books. You probably get great value out of this, Jeff Jarvis, because I never actively read. You think read. I'm organized? Well, I, li I read, but I don't actively read. I don't underline. I don't do marginalia. Right. I don't take notes. But uh, I read some articles that talked about doing this as a way to remember what you read and, and engage with it more. And so I'm listening to a book. I thought, I like that quote. I'm gonna, I want to save that quote. And that's the easiest thing to do, transcribe it, and then cut and paste into my uh, Rome so you got diary. It. Yeah. There's Giving yourself a digital my, uh, imprint. Underlining one book. Do you, let me see. Let me see Jeff's picture. He under, you underline? Oh yeah, you you don't even use a uh, highlighter. You just underline with a pen. Oh, no, I don't, oh, no, I don't like it. It went all white. Yeah, I, I, I just don't read physical books. I do the audio books. So That's I never, why I wanted yeah. this recorder. I never get any value like that. Um, every now and then I'll get a book like I have Mr. Rick Salmon's book, and I have I that. Love Rick. I have that on. Um, on the iPad or Kindle, whatever you want to call it. So here's it. the transcript. But that's it. Right there. The world is run by one billion evil men, 10 million stupid men, and 100 million uh, cowards. The evil men are the power... Are, oh, it didn't do a perfect job. The power rich men and the politicians and the fanatics of religion whose decisions rule the world and set it on its horse and greed and destruction. It's not a perfect transcript. But see, I have yeah. the audio so I can right. listen to it and fix it. Interesting quote. I, I like the quote. That's from Shantaram, which is a wonderful book. Interesting quote. Uh, I read it, but they said Chatham House Rules, so I can't tell you who wrote it. <laughs> right? That's how it works, right? I feel like that's our new Gutenberg, Chatham, Chatham House, House Rules. Rule. Chatham House Rule. 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 There's only one. Singular. There one is rule is... Sorry. You can report the information, not just not who said it. That's right. <laughs> so funny. Uh, so they're going to put that call, the transcription in the uh, in the uh, translate, but they're also going to put it in their new call recording feature, possibly. That's a. Po I don't know if that's changed lot because it's not an, an, it's not official yet. Uh, add to playlist button appears in Google Podcasts for some, but it doesn't work yet. That's kind of dopey. Google is making a short form video. Sharing, sharing app, app for DIY tutorials. Tangy, which stands for Teach and Give. Oh, why with that name? That's terrible. Tangy. Oh, my goodness. And don't you oh. have YouTube already? So here, you want to know how to make a five-minute ponytail? I know you do. This is not going to end Let's well. Have five a, minutes? <laughs> five minutes seems a long time to make a ponytail. Yeah, it does. Uh, <laughs> especially in a 50 <laughs> It's got loud music. I think she's drawing it out, Kat Katarina Tanska. Wait, she's that's but not this, this is a fancy ponytail. Well, I, well that's why it's I guess needs for five minutes, yeah. But that's why you still have TikTok, you still have this Snapchat. This is tangy. You still Looks have a little YouTube. like TikTok, doesn't it? You have all of these other alternatives out there. This is just something else Google's throwing up against the wall to see if it sticks and it's not going to stick. Here is it's how you stick. would doodle it's, on a wallet. Yeah, cuz that's useful. What? Can you hit rewind? Oh, I'm, I'm not sure I caught that. Can you rewind it's that? It's a tiny touch to a lovely gift for someone special. Oh, oh that's God. just... <laughs> Don't doodle on my wallet. Tangy. Please. 
tangy. Somebody make a bite of this. I oh, might. Oh, a bite. I might need this because uh, it is Lisa's birthday and our anniversary oh, today, and I don't like have Pinterest. a gift yet. It's very Pinteresty, isn't it? Oh, happy birthday, Lisa! And happy, yeah, happy anniversary, birthday. guys! But I don't have a gift for her, so maybe I could quickly. You have no ads. You're poor. I could <laughs> quickly make a key to my heart cake. Forty-seven seconds. Three layers. Hi, Paola Yi. Look, you ice three layers you cannot make with a pink buttercream. You fold Ooh, fondant, fondant over no. it to ruin no. its flavor and taste and texture. Then make more fondant with a gold and silver edible glitter, color mist, shimmering pearl. And there you have it. Oh, right. there's so, a key. So I'm not getting anything out of that. Well, uh, I'm telling you one thing. I ain't eating this cake. That's got all sorts of heavy metals. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's not teaching anybody anything. It's actually glitter is microplastics, which which people want to uh, yes. abolish. They're poisoning our planet. Yes. When when the archaeologists by Paula, when the archaeologists come along and say what happened to this civilization, they're going to say, Ooh, "Wait, I want that ruffle cake. That is interesting." All right, let's make a buttercream ruffle cake. <laughs> I just want to know how torture. to do the ruffles. This is. Friggin' torture. <laughs> we are giving Tangy all of its its views. This is all the, the views Tangy will have for the month. <laughs> Wait, what kind of hyper is that? That's what I Oh, it's the fat one. The okay. fat one. Look at that. Now you know. You know everything you need to know. I, I know. That's actually To make a ruffle heavy. cake. It's a life hack or a cake hack, okay. if you all, will. And all of this is on Pinterest, I'm sure. Right? This Pinterest, is Pinterest. You have to link. This is I don't Google's understand. With videos. Yeah, can you do Pinterest video with, with Pinterest? Short videos. Oh, I can't stop tangy. It's going to play in the background. Oh, mercy. T-A-N-G-I. For what it's worth, I did appreciate yeah. learning how to do I that. I think we've all learned something today. I'm glad you're happy. Nest. Hey, makes baking me happy. is very important to me. Nest is te testing a feature to give you an, an alert if your heating or air conditioning goes down. And, and then... And then booking... Ha with a uh, uh, repair uh, person from Handy. So broad picture, this is kind of a big deal because Honeywell and a lot of the other companies, so Residio, which now owns the Honeywell home brand, they have been working with their they have their own HVAC gear and their own distributors, and they've been saying forever that they're going to create this link. And this is Nest basically saying, oh, we can do this too. You guys don't have like a lock on this ability, and so it's just it's another way that we're still having competition in this mm -hmm. area. Good. I have to say I was a little disappointed. I read this article in Gizmodo, but I didn't read the whole headline. I just read read the first part. Massive leak reveals pretty much everything, and I thought, wow, finally, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to know about Area 51 and the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> and it turns out it's just about the next Samsung foldable phone. Who cares? February 11th, we'll all find out together in fact we're going to do a live stream of that samsung have, have any of you seen a person with a foldable phone in the wire yes wild? yes we did it see yes yeah. we uh oh, we saw quite that. a few well it wasn't that's not the wild that's not the wild oh that is the wild <laughs> you didn't go to ces jeb yeah. <laughs> that was wild the, this is the wild no he was uh part of the twit army and he had the the galaxy oh, fold so if oh. he had it yeah he, he was a galaxy civilian fold. oh mm -hmm. wow. no he was in the twit army yes he was a civilian in the Twit Army. <laughs> because oh, I saw. Yeah, you got a point As it there. turns out, if you're in the Twit Touché, Army, you're not actually you're not in, the army. in the Army. Right, right, <laughs> right, right, right. Imagine if, if, if the chat room were armed. Yeah. Yes. Actually, I'm a, little, I'm a little skeptical about folding phones. Nokia put out a video on their a new flip phone with a bending screen. I don't have a copy of the video. Sorry, I can't. Uh, and, but in the video, it said... It's completely normal to have bumps and bubbles in the screen. Nope. Oh no. Don't feel don't feel bad. Nope. That's normal. Nope. Nope. Uh, nope. No. 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 That's what the guy on the street no. said after he tinted my windows. Yeah. Dang it. <laughs> yes. You got some guy in the street to tint your windows? No, I'm just I mean, that's that's who I would expect to tint be. Like, tint your windows fifteen bucks, lady. <laughs> He used to have squeegee men, but in, in, in Seattle, in Texas, a little higher no, I'll do it while you're pumping your gas. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Murdoch, Rupert C. Murdoch. 
I have to wait 15 seconds while Variety shows me a blank screen because I haven't. We had didn't officially yet. close out the change log, <laughs> sir. That's the Google change log. Now it's close. I feel better now. Perfect timing. Now I can see the Variety <laughs> article. News Corp has launched something new called News K N E W Z. No. With stories from 400 publishers promising no clickbait or <clears throat> narrow-minded nonsense. What is the definition of narrow-minded nonsense? Oh boy. So I went through it. I put that up. And I went. I went through the the very long homepage, and they do have links to the New York Times, the Washington Post, CNN, Guardian, the Nation. But that's all, in my view, a cloak for them to have links to Daily Caller, Breitbart, oh. uh, The Sun, Washington Examiner, Newsmax, The Blaze. Uh, Fox, of course, and Washington Times. Are those all Murdoch properties? No, they're not Murdoch properties, but they're... Um, Murdoch Worldview. Far, yes, thank Times you very much. Thousand. Well said, well said. So is this um, crypto far right? Uh, yeah, in a way. It's, 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 it's hiding behind the skirt of the links to the New York Times and stuff. And Murdoch's, it's Murdoch's war on Google as well, saying we don't want your sneaking site and we don't want you stealing stuff from us and we're going to have this and that and that. But it's also a way to say, oh, you want to see balance? Then you got to include the blaze. Not so much, in my view. So, or Breitbart. And for what it's worth, I think some of these titles are link bait. For instance, watch this man find out his three hundred forty-six dollar Rolex Daytona is now worth seven hundred thousand. Actually, it's kind of a cool story. Oh, <laughs> link bait. <laughs> Meryl Streep sells her posh New York City penthouse for fifteen point eight million dollars. Yeah, link lots bait. of TMZ up here. There's link lots. bait. Lots. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle shocked about losing Commonwealth roles. Link bait. Link bait. That's pretty much you can't not do link bait in the world, this world, right? I I, I don't have a lot of people on my site, but I don't do link bait. <laughs> <laughs> then maybe there's maybe a relationship. Is there a correlation here? There's, 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 between those things. <laughs> No, no, no. Your your version of link bait is oh my god, new Intel chip. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but that's legit. <laughs> <laughs> Michael Bloomberg shakes a dog's mouth gets teased online you know, I, I don't think it's too one. I don't think it's too slanted no 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 it's this is all a very clever and rather nuanced way to say we got an NPR here but we're going to sneak in the Washington Times we're going to sneak in um, honestly right the layout is awful yeah it's terrible yeah it uh, it's just a bunch of riffs it's ugly as sin. Their their yeah. the highlight color is a mustard yellow. Uh, every single headline has a mustard yellow uh, tag above it. There I are we call that golden rod. Golden rod. I call it mustard yellow. There's there are very. I saw baby. I saw baby couldn't help it yellow. There are baby couldn't help it yellow. There are very few pictures, like none. So that's not I very attractive. Think um, that's because they probably don't want anybody to take their picture. It looks like Drudge Report. Yeah. It has that kind of yeah. text forward look. Without the life. Without the life. Without the vim and the vigor. Maybe if I go to politics, I'll see more. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, this, so, so, this is link bait. This is link bait from Breitbart. Joe Biden suggests making Michelle Obama running mate appointing Barack to the Supreme Court. <laughs> ah, Breitbart. That's Breitbart. <laughs> Is it whole cloth or is there a little truth in it? Who knows? You know, with Joe, you just don't know. You just don't know what, what Joe's going to say. Oh, he said, I would, but I don't think he'd do it. Okay, fine. Well, I sure would like Michelle to be the vice president. They're such decent and honorable people. He said <laughs> to laughter from the crowd. So, yeah, it's not, he didn't really suggest it. Somebody else suggested it, and he didn't say no. This thing looks really bad. Yeah. Gosh, it's hard uh, to look yep. at. It. It's interesting. <laughs> didn't Murdoch spend millions of dollars building something uh, specifically for iOS called, what was it, the News? Well, it was the Tabby. Yeah, it was, it was the Daily, I think it was. The Daily. Was tablet. Was it. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, I think it was about $25 million he went through. And it just oh, went nowhere. Oh, boy, nowhere yeah. Nowhere fast. Um, so he's... Here. You know, he or his people or Lachlan or somebody, uh, you know, they're trying stuff. You got to you got to try stuff. You got to try. Stuff. Uh, this has a this has an agenda. This is this is the new fair and balanced. This is, you know, Facebook. You better have Breitbart up on yours, your news tab, because we have it on ours. And you better have Daily Caller on yours. Right. We have it on ours. Right. 
Okay. And we also have the New York Times. Hey, what's wrong? Hey, we okay. got the New York Times, the liberal scum. You I know? think there's a lot of room for this. That, uh, you know, uh, why be far left or far right? Why be so obvious about it? There's a lot of room for that. I'm going to give this a try for a week. I like the mustard yellow gets But it's, it. it's hard to look at this. Yeah. Just It's just hard it to look at It is literally yellow news. <laughs> <laughs> <I, yeah. laughs> literally. Yellow journalism. <laughs> yellow I think journalism. we may have to deprogram you after that week, uh, Ant. I don't oh, know. Oh, man. It's mm. not that. I, yeah, I mean... To, you probably should never consider Breitbart a legitimate news source. Right. So much That's of their stuff is That's really what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Um, but and the Daily Mail. The Daily oh, Mail's boy. bad too. Yeah. But that's a Murdoch property, so no, 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 no. It's no, not. No, no. The Sun is. No, no, the, the Daily Sun Mail's is. Not. That's right. Oh, he's showing how open-minded he is. Um, I can't. I can't see Rupert Murdoch anymore without seeing Succession. Oh, I know Succession is not based on them. Man. But I just feel like it that gave us was, an insight into how show was really good. It was so yeah, you liked it. it was really I did good. not like it. I, I struggled to watch it at first it's, because you have to because they're exactly so awful. Well, they're so they were so awful. so dang gum rich. I couldn't yeah. relate. But they're rich and awful. You know, yeah, and that. And, and it just shows you can be rich and. Stacy, I agree with you at the beginning, but I I, I, I am going you. back to it, and I'm glad I did. I struggled for the first two episodes or so, but it got better. Why do I, I stayed I until Ooh. I stayed for four or five episodes, and I was like, wow. no. It's my favorite TV no. show. My we like Billions. Billions, billions was good, too. I think I Succession's better than Billions. I, I this, love Billions. Five billions or six episodes, good. no. And I wasn't willing to give it any more of my time. So right. tomorrow is the Rich end of my, uh, my late discovery, one of my favorite shows. What, wait it's a minute. The, end. the Witcher? No. <laughs> Which one? <laughs> I can't uh, see Jeff going for Geraldo uh, Rivia. I got to be honest. One of his favorite shows. Which I don't one? even know what that is. The Witcher. Uh, oh, that's a good show. It's on the Good Place. It's terrible. Oh, the, the Good, good place. place. It's the end of The Good oh, Place. Oh, but I haven't seen it. We're waiting for the whole thing, but I love oh, The Good Place. Shut the front anything. door. You have I've never watched that. You cannot skip through. You've got to watch from the very beginning or else it's ruined. Ant, you don't know? Oh, no. We've watched. We've watched. Never watched it. Episodes oh, one, two, and three. Yeah. And we're just waiting for four. I'm exactly the same. Yeah. All the. Here are all the forking fake swears. <laughs> in the oh good yeah, we place. talked about this last week, but I thought Oh, we did. Jeff, oh, never mind. Okay. Jeff, didn't you say you hadn't watched it? I didn't watch it and then Craig Newmark was in love with it and he kept on quoting his favorite philosopher Chitty. So I should cue Chitty, this up. Yes. Is what you're saying. Uh, Chitty is my so, daughter. Um Chitty, what's his last name? Chitty Abendai. Agdogom Agdogom or something. And so 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 Craig would would kind of test people. I hope he doesn't get mad if we say this, but I think it was hilarious. He'd say, he'd say he's well as my favorite philosopher, Chidi Adogage says, and he would he would just straight faced quote a line that was a smart line, and waiting for anybody to understand that he just quoted the sitcom. Oh um, my God, we would have gotten in a heartbeat. It was wonderful, very funny. Uh, but I, the show. So Craig was right. I watched it. It's it's. I love it. I absolutely loved it. But it's gonna go away. The good, the good place. There's like five. Yeah, I, four or I five think you'd seasons, like it, Ant. Right? But you gotta you watch probably, the very beginning. Okay. My daughter I, and I like. My daughter loves this show. She's 13. Loves wow, it. I love Look at those Bell. Rotten Tomato scores. Her. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I think she's great. I'm telling you. Okay. I'm in. Christian All right. Bell, just right Isn't she great? I love oh. it. <clears throat> oh, heartthrob. Um, I would do an ad right here, but I have a <laughs> promise to you. But that in protest. Light rock, more talk. That's right. I have an exciting and Principles. totally nutso pick. Coming so. to you from the Twit Last Pass Studios, it's now time for Stacey Higginbotham's Pick of the Week. Oh, and I didn't put it in the rundown. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry, it's a surprise read, to all of us. <laughs> it's, it's a surprise to everyone. We don't um, want any rundown spoilers. I. <laughs> this is crazy. No but pick spoilers. I saw an article about something that not only have I watched with my daughter, but something I've actually created with my child. Oh boy! And I was like, oh my god, it's an internet trend. So Slate did an article about American Girl doll stop motion videos. Which oh man you, oh wow <laughs> these are awesome and the article is about how she starts off watching it ironically but then realizes 
that these are like girls who my daughter's too old for it now. They put hours of work into this. They do. It's they put and this is like right. a thing. And we used to set up. We did not do stop motion. We did. Uh, we took pictures and created like Time storyboards. Lapse. Oh, storyboard. Okay. But you know it's. Same concept. We just yep. didn't have the hours of time. Mm -hmm. um, and I actually have in my office Taylor and I can't remember the other one's name right now, the other American girl. But we would set up stuff, and my daughter thought it was so fun. And if you look at these videos, here's the just true fantastic. meaning of Christmas. For some reason, I'm looking for Pennywise to jump out or something. I don't know. <laughs> They're not creepy. Well, some of them are creepy or weird, but most of them are just like no, girls. It's sweet. Girls. It's girls. Yeah. <laughs> My daughter loved the American Girl dolls. And she you have sons, right? Those. Yes, I do, sir. Yeah, he doesn't See, know about American Girl dolls. You didn't dolls. have this experience of going to the American Girl store. Oh, we went to Chicago. No, we went We went to everywhere else, though. Oh, <laughs> and Abby, Abby like had this. cut the hair off her American Girl doll, and we brought it to the hospital, and they put the hair back on. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. The, 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 tea, the cafe. The cafe, we which has there, there's a little spot chairs for, the doll. for your doll. Oh, man. And you, she it's has it's a whole bunch of dads right. with two and a half foot high people <laughs> so running cute. around. Very it's excited. So I went with uh, my best friend. Stacey, did you do American Girl Store? Uh, we had three American girls in our house. Four. Did you do the store? But you got to go to Chicago oh, go yeah. to the store. Yeah. Oh, did. we didn't okay. go to the Chicago store, but there was yeah. a store in Houston that we went to and it was almost cruel because we went the day before my daughter's birthday and we were giving her a doll for her oh, birthday. Oh, so couldn't get anything. Oh. We, well, we... We finally got something because it was just the sat like because yeah. she's very sweet and at the time she was younger and even sweeter and she just was like and we were like oh my god we're terrible <laughs> I parents I can't believe we did this so the American Girl dolls are uh, you know Here, full hold size up, hold dolls up. we're gonna go show you one that <laughs> ha each of them has a story uh, usually the his there's, history there's of books America you read with your daughter there's which books are they have the clothes and the accessories appropriate. Uh -oh. They have uh, dolls of all ethnicities, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a really wonderful uh, kind of for history. And then, um, so Stacy has uh, which doll is this? Hi. This is a a <laughs> truly me doll or whatever the heck. Oh, you it is. customize it to make it your own. Oh man! Yes. So Hello. that came after my daughter got out of it because she only had the choice of yes. the existing. I remember seeing this stuff. Yeah. We used to have Rebecca, but she she's. <clears throat> now. I am ashamed to admit I was uh, I, I was a slave to consumerism. Not only did she have several oh. of the big dolls, oh, yeah. but I found my I think it was my first eBay purchase. Somebody was selling a giant trunk. They made little ones too at one point. Yes, oh, wow. in one of the videos, they were playing the the these dolls. Yeah, were playing with the little dolls. Yeah, their own dolls, and they had one that had every one up to up to the point of that release. So it was like thirty American girl, yeah. little American girl dolls in a trunk with clothes and stuff. And I bought it for Abby. I was this. It wasn't. Do very you expensive. remember the American Girl Social Network? No. Oh, oh, they yeah. had a social network, a safe social network for little girls. And it really was safe. Aww. It was wonderful. And you'd make friends. You weren't supposed to know the real names, right? But yeah. you, you would make a friend. You could reconnect with that same person. And it was it was, it was was monitored like crazy. But obviously, it was expensive to run. And and they killed it. And it, it, it heartbroken little girls suddenly separated from all their friends. It was awful. Interesting. Oh, my God. It's like how everyone would Google Plus shit. Down. By the way, your yeah. tip... <laughs> Your tip has also pointed me to a new thing that I'm going to read more of, which is a, a feature on Slate called Rabbit Holes. This was an article in Rabbit Holes while I waste hours losing myself in the American Girl Stop motion <laughs> cinematic universe. But there's a lot more, and they look very funny and interesting oh, yeah. and poignant and sad. Weird and just, wedding Instagram. Yeah. Isn't that a funny uh, one? Searching Craigslist for, where was that one? I missed that one. They're very strange. A rabbit wow. hole. So rabbit holes. Why I spent waste time searching for the fake questions in advice columns. <laughs> Why I spent my early writing career chasing rarefied words like impermeable. <laughs> 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 That's <laughs> our show title there. <laughs> Why I spend hours Leo searching for is impermeable. Impermeable. <laughs> oh, look, this is about the uh, social media network that my daughter was into, <clears throat> Neopets. Abby was oh, all into Neopets. Mm -hmm. The raw, unflinching honesty in Neopets chat rooms offer me solace and company. Nice. So, thank you, Stacy, for an excellent pick of the week. 
Now would go. be a good time for Jeff Jarvis to give us a number of the week. <laughs> I'm just asking my daughter what the other social network she was in on. Um, Probably Ping. So, I've got a few here. <laughs> uh, I'm, 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 I'm gunning down. Okay, I like so, the Bezos story. You do? Okay, fine. Mackenzie Bezos just dumped $370 million of her Amazon stock. That was less than 1% of oh. her holding. She has more than she has three point seven billion dollars in stock. Insane, and probably three hundred seventy million. I I could probably live on that for insane. some time. Insane, isn't that great? She's good for she's her. getting into her um, good for her uh, yeah. philanthropy. Oh, Circle of Friends, my daughter says. Circle of Friends. Okay, it was another one that was shut down. It was so cool and unusual. Honestly, she kind of got ripped off because Bezos still is the richest guy in the world. She only got four percent. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, of Amazon's total uh, shares, 19.7 million shares. Yeah, but she's still smiling in all of those It's images. enough money, but, <laughs> she, but to credit to Mackenzie Bezos, she was very active in the founding of Amazon. She, Absolutely. Yes, she did yes, the original business yes. plan. Yeah. No, she, she, this is so, um, support, big time. Yep. Uh, let us mention that Paris Musée is, is putting up 100,000 free-use images up online for your next <gasps> blog post when you put something. Nice. That's awesome. What kind of images on Paris Musée? Uh, uh, art and oh, their museum, old, museum. It's an old story. Hold on, I'm gonna put oh. up an old story. Oh. That doesn't matter. No, January 13, 2020. It's new to me. That's awesome. Yeah, it's oh, I love that. That's uh, going on my next blog there. post. Absolutely, yeah. the, and the photos too are just amazing. Um, I tend to do that. 14 and then I can't, I can't resist wow. this one, and yeah. it's a number because because it's because it's three. Is there's a protest going on in the UK? There is a Brexit coin, and it doesn't have the Oxford comma. So there's a move to oh, boycott the Brexit <laughs> fifty pence coin over the missing Oxford comma in the phrase "peace, prosperity, comma, and friendship with all nations." Hmm. I would think that on a coin, given the logic of AP style not giving the Oxford comma because of like typesetting rules and the pain of actually dealing with more type, I feel that imprinting a coin kind of follows those same rules so it's kind of justifiable stacy stacy i don't care there about the is oxford no excuse comma. for good. skipping the oxford comma no i think yes. she's right stacy. jeff it's a it's a uh stacy. it's a, i will fight you it's a on medallion this, it's a uh, it's a different standard applies hold on we'll be right back <laughs> <laughs> he's getting a book look at this look at this watch jeff jarvis get a book out of his massive goes library. to the library i know he's gonna get eats <laughs> shoots and leaves and leaves i have that book uh, no he's not it's not what is it oh is it gutenberg pause, pause and effect and punctuation in the west that actually looks good i just oh. read an entire book it's out now it's fresh it's new entire book about the semicolon <gasps> It's on Amazon. It's and it's a popular book. <clears throat> I believe that. I I have a never mind. What what are you are you going to be heretical again about the Oxford comma? Are no, you gonna, are I you just, just I have mad. Like if she someone in my face. job interview says, "Hey, what's your biggest weakness?" I will like straight up say, "Commas, yeah, commas are yeah, my biggest yeah, weakness." Yeah, yeah. Did, All did of my editors remark uh, about my eighth grade English teacher Everett Leonard said, "Comma blunder." is one of the worst things <laughs> you can do in your writing, comma blunder. Did we discuss this? Did you know that from the first century until the seventh to 12th century, scriptura continua was done where there was no space in writing? I know, it's awful. No swishing. Yes, we did talk about that. We just got about and that, I, yes, right. It's and awful. we talked about kids learning to read, and I talked about my That's daughter right, learning to write. This yep. show just that. doesn't stop, does it, folks? I remember that. It's just just so all the grammar minutiae you could ask. All right, so one more, one more, one more, because we got no ads. We got lots of uh, Una mas uh, tips. Numero. Um, so uh, what font do you like? Um, Author Sam Richardson had asked the internet to reveal the deepest part of yourself. Which font and which size do you write in? Babus, Babus New, and Futura are my two oh, favorites. I like Futura. That's a good one. I don't know Mavis. Babus New. Babus. Mm -hmm. Times New Roman. Oh, in that's old 11. fashioned. I'm Times New Roman 12 because I'm old. Yeah, I could be 12. I can do Times New 12, but Babus New and, and Futura. Babus? How do you spell Babus? That's what I don't know. You got me. B-E-B-A-S-N-E-U-E. Noia. Yes. Babus Noia from Font Fabric. Oh, Font Noia. Fabric. Noia, sorry. Or, sorry, uh, Deutsch. He yeah, speaks Deutsch. German, so it's always. 
Babus I'm trying to look for a sample oh. of it. Oh, okay, that's very, very nice. Pretty. It's a nice sans font. Oh, yeah. I yeah, agree with you. Yeah. So uh, we now have learned something about Aunt Pruitt. He's a Sans guy. Yes, I Doesn't am. like uh, Carsten. Don't like Sans. Carsten. <laughs> Carsten. Yeah. What's nice the Harvard Carsten. boy's favorite font? Verdana. Verdana all the way. Verdana yeah. is good. Verdana. That was designed uh, nice. for screens. So yes. there is something to be said. In I was fact, figuring you were going for Gothic, uh, Carsten. No, nice, no, you know, I German Gothic serifs. script. Serifs are bad. He loves black letter. Yeah. Don't like serifs myself. Um... Well, I like Adobe's Myriad and Minion because mm -hmm. there are two fonts designed again for the screen. Yep. One serif, one sans serif, so you get to choose. Yep. I will often choose those as my default. But if I were writing, I'm not sure what I would use for writing. I, I, I really like my Babus with video content or thumbnails. They just, it just stands Babus out. Babus is beautiful. And especially if you've got a heavy one, it would really be beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very nice. I wouldn't, I wouldn't have guessed you were a font, font geek. He's a font geek. And? Yeah. Yeah. Create and, and content dominate. Creator. That's true. I love fonts. I love fonts. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Did I ever tell you the story of, of Entertainment Weekly and Caslon? No. Yes. No, sir. I don't recall. She's that. Told, told that story? That. I told the story. I think... <laughs> I don't remember. Go ahead. Sam. I probably didn't, but Stacy's just saying, no, I'm not going to do another story. She's no, just no, saying, no, no. I got a headache. I have a headache. Torture. I don't want to no. hear it. No. We no, won't she, torture I think he has done it. it I, does think, I think she's done it. I think, like, I, I'm like, I, because I know what Caslon <laughs> is because of this story. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, that's guess not. Oh. Magazine and print geeks would really <laughs> care about fonts quite a bit, wouldn't they? Oh, get them talking about kerning. Good Lord. Well, Ooh, yes. I love I love the movie Helvetica. I really did. And uh, my favorite book about fonts is uh, Stop Stealing Sheep. And it comes from, I don't know if it's in print anymore. It was really a great book. It comes from some famous fontographer who said, anyone who would kern black letter would steal sheep. <laughs> That's a font joke. Come on. All right, Ant, give us your pick of the week. I've just fixed the rundown. <laughs> Oh, my God. He made it all be some sort of weird no, serif. I hate you so much. What oh, font is that? dude. God. That's ugly. What is that font? God, it's all no. Times, times New, now. man. Oh, that's yeah. the worst font. <laughs> Helvetica is so a good better. movie. If you haven't seen Helvetica, it will give you a, a kind of an interest in fonts. <laughs> oh, God. I pissed off Carson. I could change it back. Leaked. I'm going to make it all trebuchet. Uh, my blood pressure just spiked. <laughs> How about, let's see, what could be, how about Ultra? There you go. Now it's good. Now it's all good. Hey, man. Hey, man. Oh, boy. We're all Western eyes here. Hurt. All right, Ant, do your pick, man. Do your pick. Um, my pick, I have two things. Uh, Filmic Pro, uh, they are an application that I've used in the past for recording video for little projects I've done. And their video app has a lot more controls in it where you can control frame rate and focus peaking and things of that nature it's, it's not just firing up your smartphone's regular video app uh, but they just updated a new service for the folks using iphone 11 or 10s 10s or greater and it's called double take and it allows you to do multi-cam video it's so cool and it's really really slick and intuitive and I don't have multicam, of course, but I like the idea of them putting yet another tool at your fingertips for a well, really good price. It's also cool because the, yeah, free is a yeah. good price. <laughs> Although I paid for the pro version of Filmic hoping to get this feature and they, mm. put, they gave and it, they put it free. free. <laughs> but I think they're going to put it in the pro and maybe add some features. So what's cool is the mm -hmm. iPhone, uh, in this case, the iPhone 11 Pro Max has three cameras in the back and one on the front. So you get to pick, if you could show the front of my screen, you get to pick from whichever two of those you want and then once you've done that so i'm going to have a rear picture mm -hmm. and a, a forward looking picture and i record and if i'm interviewing you mm -hmm. i could say i'm talking to aunt uh, pruitt i wish we'd had this for ces right that would been have great been, we were waiting for this we were hoping and you can put it in post as two different images and it makes post processing us so much easier yeah yeah, uh, I, I really really dig that so you get to choose you could have picture in picture side by side Split screen or us or if you want you and you can control individual. focus for either camera <laughs> independently this shows really how much horsepower is in the iphone mm -hmm. actually it's impressive really neat filmic pro what's double it take double take double take f-i-l so if you have an iphone 10s an iPhone. or higher you're yeah. good to go and my second thing was uh basically just something that was in my brain when i got up this morning and i sent out a tweet <laughs> and it's just 
Did the words baby drifting just baby drifting come well, in your head? Well, no, but it's just we have so much dadgum hate and stuff going on <laughs> nowadays. Just just do your best today to, to leave your positive mark on this planet. I don't care if it's just a skid mark or pushing your, mark. your sibling around like that on the floor. Just do something oh, and just just sounds... leave a positive mark, people, because we got so much crap going on out here in this world and we need every little bit of positivity that we can get and it can start with something like that it can start with just sending a selfie to your mom saying hey mom oh something. i need to do that you that's know? good Any, anything hey mom but that's it i'll uh, show you a little way that you can um i dropped something nice in the show to, or in the, the live chat it is a postcard set for font lovers Oh wow! Ooh, um, since nerd. since all of y'all are so excited about funds, I figured you would appreciate nerd. these. Paper dash hammer dot com. You get avant garde Cecilia Euro style Futura Mrs. Eves for twenty four bucks. You get uh, twelve fonts. But the the little phrases on them are hilarious. Yes, Mrs. Eves was my babysitter. <laughs> I can be a little strange. Not Some trash. An enigma. Euro style. <laughs> Keeping up with uh. I'd go to Helvetica and back for you. Times. Oh, that's cute. I collect I'm not old animals. fashioned. I'm old English. <laughs> this is awesome. All right. All right. What's what's the font on the rundown now? Oh, you put it back. Oh. Oh, they changed it back. I had this nice uh Kill kind of Joys. Felt marker uh, font. It was really <laughs> Is that what it was? I was trying to wonder what it was. Thank it was, you for it fixing very, that. Very annoying. Thank you for fixing that. Oh, oh man, you guys Karsten. are no font. <laughs> Control Z, man. Control Z. Oh, Aww. well, I can't read it now on the, on the plus side. <laughs> oh, oh, you guys, we have to hurry or I have to go, whichever. All right, we're done. Right. We're done. Right. We are? Uh, no. no Leo, you didn't give us a pick. Oh, who cares? Do your, you? do your product hunt thing. All right. Product hunt has released a new website called Your Stack, a site that I will probably use for about five minutes and then stop using the <laughs> idea. <laughs> It's like Facebook. Well, I'm it's sorry. Like every I'm other sorry. Site I didn't realize we were doing this under duress. Good Lord. Uh, <laughs> the idea is, so Product Hunt, which I like, uh, but also don't use, is, is where people go to say, hey, something new just came out, or I just put something out, and they, people vote on it. This is just a place where it's kind of a nice idea for a social network. You just go in there and say, hey, here's something I like. Um, okay. A book, an app, a picture, whatever you want to put there. Um, I think is really cool. Now, this is a lot of what we do on our shows. I should probably put Rome in there, although somebody probably already has. So, there you go. Uh, just a, a stack of... And this is, again, this is a replacement for Twitter or Facebook. Mm -hmm. Just stuff that's good. Yeah. What you like. Yep. I'm sure I liked somebody's. it for about 30 seconds. And yeah, that's one of those. It. One of those yeah. things. That's why I didn't really care if I didn't get to share it with you. I'm sure somebody's minding it. Stacy Higginbotham has to go. Thank you, Stacy. Thank you, guys. Always a pleasure. Stacy on IOT is her website. Bye, Stacy. Dot com. Get the uh, newsletter there. That's free and it's a must get. You can also get her uh, great podcast she does with Kevin Toffel, the IOT. Podcast. It is. It is. Thank you, Stacy. And uh, she and her oh. American Girl doll are going to go now. That's, have, that's this week's thumbnail. <laughs> cup of tea. We found the soft side Aww. of Stacy. <laughs> Hey, I still have my American Girl typewriter right here on my desk. Right? What? <laughs> oh, my God. Look at wow. that. <gasps> Check it. It's a wow. working typewriter that makes really Is that an Underwood? <laughs> it's, it's, not, it's not quite as good. It only does then. one letter, but that's still. And, and the paper actually goes through. Wow, that's so cute. Uh, Jeff Jarvis joins us each week to share his wisdom about Gutenberg. His blog is buzzmachine.com. He's a professor of journalism at CUNY, and uh, we love having you on. And he, you're yeah, working on a new... A new graduate school of journalism. Yeah, I, I don't have that paper in front of me. So. <laughs> okay, you don't need to, you don't need to make sure that... can't read the whole I thing. I quoted Craig today, if so I want to make sure. If we'd had ads on the show today, I would have read it, but I, oh God, I'm you doing know what? this you know for what? free. Kevin, I, I looked at your new thing, now. your stack. Guess who's there? There we go. Who? You? Scoble. Scoble. Yes, yeah, Scoble is one of the he's first pe person to post on it. Of course. Uh, of course. Jeff Jarvis he's is everywhere. Leonard Tapp, Professor for Journalistic Innovation no, at the Craig no. Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of no, New York and the director no, no, no. of the Town Night Center. Stacey has to go. You know, Entrepreneurial no. Journalism at the Craig Newmark Graduate School of Journalism at the City University of New York. <laughs> 
Aunt Pruitt's got a very short CV. He's here. That's me. He does uh, hands-on photography, twit.tv slash hop. That's right. A regular on This Week in Google. And uh, soon, I don't want to say what it's, but yeah. it's good. Well, I can't wait to We're hear. We're still working on it. It's good. I We're like it. We're still working it's on it. It's going to be a good show. I'm, I'm excited about it. <laughs> Uh, me, I'm just the guy who sits in this chair all the time. <laughs> if you enjoy the show, come back again. We do it every Wednesday, 1.30 Pacific, 4.30 Eastern, 21.30 UTC. You can watch or listen live at twit.tv slash live. You can also download on-demand episodes. Those are all available at the website, twit.tv. In this case, it's twit.tv slash twig. Uh, there's the snowstorm from last week, Stacy. It's all melted away. Oh. oh, that was like two weeks ago. I two think. weeks ago. And okay. don't forget the survey. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, survey, oh, yeah. survey, survey. Take it. Take the survey. Twit.to/survey20. Maybe we can find somebody to buy an ad on this show. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lord. Okay, well, I'm going to leave y'all on that depressing note. Thank you, Stacy. Thank, Thank, Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. I'm taking my toys and going Take your toys and get out of here. Bye, I'm Leo Laporte. We'll see you next time on This Week in Google. Bye-bye.